Welcome to the premier Thanksgiving weekend classic. A day with better fit for indoors and outdoors. Along with Billy Taylor, this is Ed Ingalls. As the pace setters won the coin toss, elected to receive, St. John's will kick off, and kicking off for St. John's, as usual, will be John Ledwith. Billy Taylor, a quick uh, overview of this game. Well, first, I think that St. John's has a chance to win 10 games, and that's motivation for them. If they can get their running game together with Creighton, uh, and, and uh, Mark Levine at the, at the helm, I think they have a chance to do a good job. I think uh, Chris Chappa of the pace setters is going to be an excellent uh, uh, running back, and he's had a chance to show his stuff today. And out down to the 15-yard line, try to shake free from a couple of people. Four paces, Phil Hart brings it out just shy of the 25-yard line, and the pace setters will go first and 10 from there. John Yandratis, number 36, up to make the stop for St. John's. Billy, they'll run from the wing T formation, will the pace setters, and where does that put the pressure out of defense? Oh, the middle of the defense, and also it, it allows them to get outside with a lead block from the fullback or the halfback. I think it's a good offense. It just at the beginning of the game, they've got to execute if they want to show confidence. They've had some trouble because they go with the inexperienced quarterback in Mike Masaraki, number 11, took over halfway through the season. He's rolling out here on first down. Gets across the 25 and gets thrown down as he does the sprint play. Walter DeForest, St. John's very fine middle linebacker, makes a stop. Pace backfield, we told you about the quarterback, Masaranka, rather inexperienced. Chapper's their number one runner, and Billy Smith's a tough inside runner. Phil Hart is a transfer from Westchester Country, uh, Westchester Community College. At the wide receivers, Frank Bucci is their top receiver, plays tight end. You'll see him split out some today. So they go down second and seven for Pace. They give it to the big fullback trying to go up the middle. That's a play they'll run a lot, Billy. The option, they have not done the triple option too much this year, but they plan to run some triple option today. Well, Ed, the key to it also is they have to stop the fullback from getting started. There you see the pace offensive line, and the best offensive lineman there is John Stowers, number 73. St. John stacking up with Ray Lambright as their number one defensive stopper on their defensive line. The linebackers are led by Walter DeForest. He's all Mac. And the secondary is a solid one for St. John's as they go third and long yardage and carrying the football is Hart. He gets out shy of the first down. Good pursuit then by St. John's and so Ray Lambert up to make the big stop and that means Pace will have to kick it away, Billy Taylor. Well, Coach Bob Ricker was concerned because his team had such an emotional victory last week that they may be a little down. So I thought it was important for them to stop uh, the Pace setters on the first series and St. John's looks good so far defensively. Chris Chaffa, who came here to pace as a punter and then wound up doing everything else, carrying the football, becoming their leading runner, and also their kickoff man, will do the punting here. He averages 36 yards per punt. He's been a good, solid kicker this year for pace on fourth down. Waiting is John O'Leary, a breakaway threat for St. John's inside the Red Storm 40. O'Leary drifting back to the 26-yard line. Gets out across the 35, and so St. John's will go first and 10 for the first time today after a 41-yard punt by Chris Chapper. Billy Taylor, the weather has been a big factor today, obviously, with this numbing cold as we take a look at the St. John's offense. And Mark Levine is a freshman quarterback who has matured very quickly. Jermaine Creighton, of course, is the big threat running the ball. Tom McPherson is the deep threat for St. John's. He's got 37 touchdown catches for his career. As uh, one change on the offensive line, Griggs did not start today. Matt Colm is replacing him at left guard. So St. John's goes first and 10 at their 36-yard line with Levine, the quarterback, number 11. Creighton, 22, is the main man. To carry. There's a throw that's a little underthrown as St. John's tries a quick hitch pass, incomplete, second and 10 for the Red Storm. So that looked like it, as if they weren't ready to play because Mark Levine, if you remember the couple weeks ago against Iona, he came out a little bit slow, and I think now he's got to come out stronger, Ed. You see Pace defensively, Chris Weaver makes a lot of big plays, but Scott Myers is probably the best player on this Pace football team playing defensive tackle. The linebackers are very good. That's the strength of this Pace defense. The secondary a little young. As Levine goes back to pass, finds a man open with Creighton with the ball. Creighton goes across midfield into Pace territory. Wide open on that reception as Mark Levine completes his 119th pass of the season. Chris Delgrezia, the linebacker, 5'9", senior, had to go around and make the tackle. As you look at the replay, they try to get Creighton out there underneath the zone. I think Levine does an excellent job of getting him the ball very quickly. And Creighton's the kind of guy you got to give him the ball early. He's got good speed, good hands, shows it, picks up a first down for St. John's and keeps the drive going. That's the 11th 
catch for Creighton on the air. As St. John's picks up 11 yards on that play to get the first down in pace territory now. Pace plays a five-man defensive front, but they will switch out of that into a three, four, five, and six today. I think it's important, it's important uh, Ed, that Pace comes out and sets the tone defensively by trying to st stop the run. But it looks like uh, St. John's is trying to put the ball up in the air in, this, in these terrible conditions. Well, I talked to the coaches. They said it wasn't really that bad down there, but I thought it was rather windy. I was like you, Billy. I thought it was very windy. Here's Anitra trying to go on a little handoff on the inside of trap play and takes it down close to the pace 40-yard line. We have not seen that play from St. John's this year as the entire front five of the pace defense comes up to make the stop. What confuses me is that St. John's, at the beginning of the games, they seem like they try to try different items to, to work on the defense. But I think what's important is that they go right at them and allow Creighton and Anitra to pick up the tough yards inside and outside. Pace players down injured on the play. John Jagin... 5'11", 255-pound freshman from Walcott, Connecticut, is the man who's laid out there. As we have a momentary timeout of the action. Yeah, I was like you, Billy. I thought St. John's probably would go right at this pace defense because St. John's has been a bread-and-butter team in terms of getting Creighton running off the tackles, then mixing in some swing passes to Anitra, the fullback, who's very good, and then setting up the long pass to McPherson. Well, I think what... All right, we'll come back with more action right after this. Welcome to Marist, one of New York's leading liberal arts colleges. Located in Poughkeepsie on the Hudson River, the campus is midway between New York City and Albany. The college offers 24 majors and 10 pre-professional programs and provides many career-focused programs enhanced by internship opportunities for all majors. The college supports over 20 intercollegiate sports teams and more than 60 clubs and organizations. Over 80% of the student body takes part in intramural and club sports. Major renovation and expansion has greatly increased the quality of student life. Students enjoy exceptional access to advanced computer technology. A fiber optic network connects every student room to the library, faculty offices, and every other part of the campus. For more information about Marist, call the college at 914-575-3000. Still the greatest city in the world. What better place for a great university? A university with one of the leading colleges of pharmacy in the country. A top law school and nationally accredited schools of business whose programs are designed to meet the challenge of the new global economy plus affordable tuition. Yes, the city is New York, and the university is St. John's. The defensive tackle, John Gagin, helped off the field. He comes out. Joe Fina, who was a starting defensive tackle earlier this year, takes over for Gagin. So St. John's goes second and five. Levine. Nice defensive play by the linebacker, Adrian Perrone over to break up the pass intended for John Anitra. Good play then by the defensive pace, Billy. They called interference on the play, and um, there was a flag on the play. I thought that Levine threw it in double coverage, though, Ed. There were two guys on him, and I think if he had looked a little bit to his right, he would have had single coverage over the middle. So we wait to see, but the flag, Pace is backing up. Pace has had a problem this year with penalties, Billy. As you look at the replay, Levine does look to his left, but he comes back to... Uh, to his inside and I think he was double covered and I, I it was a little bit I think he should have went the other way with it because I thought I saw a man open in the middle but he's got to watch throwing into double coverage because they know Anitra is going to get the ball in the short passes so Pace's pass defense was a little too good Billy and they get him penalized so pass it at first and St. John's goes first down in 10 just inside the Pace 40 or early underway here at a scoreless football game on a very windy and cold day in St. John's carrying the ball is Creighton Creighton gets some yardage. And Billy, the thing I like about Creighton, he's become more explosive as a ball carrier as the season's gone by as Lamar Williams and Lou Kalicki make the stop. I agree with you, Ed. I think he explodes into the tacklers better than he did earlier in the year. And I think that in a, on a day like today, you need to get the running back warmed up and really into his groove. In order to do that, you've got to give him the ball several times at the beginning of the game and forget all the trickery because it just takes away from him kind of doing what he does best. So St. John's goes second and seven at the pace 36 yard line Levine going to get some pressure 
Goes down the middle, incomplete. Good pressure that time by the uh, defensive end, Chris Weaver, who on the season has uh, two sacks, but makes things happen. Weaver is uh, very quick, was the player of the week in ECA Division II when Pace knocked off Iona. Pass was intended for O'Leary. And at that time, uh, Jermaine Creighton completely missed the blitzing linebacker. The job of the running back is to pick up the linebacker on the blitz. Creighton did that. It made Levine have to rush his pass. So here comes the Red Storm, third and seven at the center's 36-yard line. Little draw play. Creighton with the football will not get the first down as they ran the draw. Jermaine Creighton, who averages almost five yards a carry, comes up short there on that third down run, stopped by Joe Finna, the defensive tackle who took over for John Gagin, the player that was injured for pace. As you look at the replay, it was kind of like a, a delayed draw to Creighton. Uh, he tries to pick his hole, but really uh, you have to give the pace setters a lot of credit. They did not get fooled by it all, and they were able to limit him to a, a short gain and come up with fourth down. Coach Greg Lasardi was saying before the game about his pace team, they're getting better reading the offensive team, what their plays are, and doing a better job of reacting to it. So St. John's goes for it on fourth down with Levine wanting to throw. It's complete to Anitra, but he will not get the first down as again pursuit is good by pace, and they turn away the Red Storm. Good play by Chris DeGrazia. The pace is all-time leading tackler with 463 make it 465 after that series he comes up with a big hit for pace and they go first and ten well ed st john's has to be careful because even though the pace setters are only two and seven if you give them a little bit of confidence they can take advantage they scouted that defense that offense very good uh they stopped the nitra for a very short game now they take over offensively and good field position for the setters of pace first and ten from their 34 yard line they go from the wing tee. They put Chapa in motion, but they come back with Smith right up the middle. The big fullback, who is 5'10", 215, runs into Ray Lambright, 6'2", 266. You know what I see, though, Ed? I see St. John's kind of stacking things in the middle, taking away that fullback. If they continue to dive them inside, if they can have a quick fake and get outside on the pitch, there may be some yards out there. Well, Coach Lasardi said we have to make St. John's respect Bill Smith up the middle to set up other things. If they don't respect Smith up the middle, we're in trouble. And uh, right now, St. John's is respecting Smith carrying up the middle after gain on the play of three yards. Nice defensive play and ticked away at the last moment by Ken Forte, the pass intended for John Weitzer and Mike Masarenka was a quarterback throwing that time. Masarenka on the year has only completed 43% of his passes. I thought it was an excellent job defensively uh, by Ken Forte because uh, he did not get sucked in by the play action at all and he stayed right with his man. Excellent job of playing defense. So with 9.07 to go in the first quarter with scoreless, Pace will go third and seven from their own 37. And again, the wing T. It's an almost a double T formation. As Masarenka wants to keep, and he gets the first down with some fancy running, but there's a flag on the play as Masarenka takes it to the St. John's 48. Let's see what the call is. Kurt Ditzler came up from his free safety spot to make the stop for St. John's. That's exactly what we talked about earlier, but this is going to be a holding penalty to bring it back. But it showed you how uh, Billy Smith sets up things by faking inside and allows uh, Mazarenko to get outside. Outstanding job. As you look at it, he fakes to Billy Smith in the middle, reads the tackle. Tackle comes down, he's able to get outside, and, and Ranko used to be a former defensive back who switched to quarterback. It shows you he has no fear at all. But as you said, it's a holding penalty against Pace, and that is something that has plagued them all year long. Joe DeQuayla made the hold on that, the 5'11", 290 freshman center. So that's going to cost Pace not only a first down, but backs them up to their own 32-yard line and sets up a long third-yard situation. And with the wind like it is, it is really tough to pick up these third and long edge. Bill, you talk about the wind and the cold. What is, how is that going to affect today's play as we're watching it unfold out here? Well, once they get going, they'll get into a groove, but the early part is very important. Masarenko wants to throw over the middle and almost intercepted by St. John's inside the 50-yard line. Diving for the football was Kirk Ditzler, the free safety. So fourth down is here for Pace, and they'll have to kick it away. As you look at the replay, Mazarenko comes straight back on a seven-step drop and really throws the ball ill-advised into double coverage. I didn't think there was a man open, and really it was, it was a bad pass by him. Fourth down, they've got to kick it away. Mazarenko is, their, uh, is, is a very good quarterback so far, but he threw a bad pass. So Chris Chappa, who had a fine punt the first time he kicked for pace of 41 yards, will do it again as John O'Leary, the fine punt returner for St. John's, awaits the kick. Here's pressure. Chappa, though, gets off a nice kick. O'Leary will let it bounce, and that will hurt St. John's as it rolls inside the 20 
with the wind behind the ball, pushes it inside the 15-yard line, and that is a nice break for pace as they back up St. John's after a kick of 53 yards by Chris Chappa. Well, Ed, I like O'Leary because I think he's a great ball player, but he made a mistake on that one. You do not allow the punt to, to, to roll because that takes away from your offense having good field position. If he at least gets the fair catch, they're up around the 30. Now they're back inside the 15-yard line. Well, DeForest almost came through to block that one for St. John's as now the Red Storm go first and 10 from their 15-yard line. Mark Levine, number 11, is the freshman quarterback for the Red Storm. The up back is John and each of the fullback. The deep back is Jermaine Creighton, who has the football. Creighton started the day needing 118 yards to break Anthony Russo's St. John's freshman rushing record. I think if, if he has that a, a chance to break the record, they should get him the ball often and early. That time, I thought the pace setters did an outstanding job of stringing it out and pursuing and, a, and a lot, limiting Creighton to a short gain. Number 32, Joe Melfi, who's starting today for the injured Jeff Teresso, made the tackle. Creighton on the day, though, has only carried the ball three times for eight yards, but after all, it is early, a one-yard pickup there, second and nine for St. John's. Levine wants to go deep. Got Mac Pearson running deep. He's got it. The race is underway. That's a terrific block, but also a tremendous tackle. As the block is made by Godis, but Jason Flowers with a shoestring tackle prevents McPherson from going all the way. But St. John's hits the big bomb. As you look at the replay, it's a straight. Uh, he fakes to the fullback. He, he fakes the counter to Creighton. Creighton is supposed to pick up the linebacker. Levine airs it out to McPherson. McPherson has the best hands probably in the entire league. Has a step on his man. Beats him. Outstanding pass and run by both McPherson and Levine. St. John's needs these big plays like that. That was good for 58 yards and gives St. John's a first down at the pace 26 yard line. So the Red Storm on the move against Pace's four-man defensive front. This is Creighton. Gets down inside the 20-yard line as he finds a little running room. Nice cutback then by Creighton. He's learning how to make the cutback too. I think that's another facet, Billy Taylor, that the freshman Jermaine Creighton has learned how to play better football. Reed Sands made the stop. Outstanding play uh, by Creighton. What he does is he reads the nose guard. They're playing that 5-2 defense, and he goes, simply just goes the outstanding, the opposite way of the nose guard. Creighton did a good job. McPherson at the top of the screen. He is a sole wide out to the left. Down at the bottom of the screen, on the right side, is Tom Godis. As St. John's goes second and four. This is Creighton again on the misdirection play, but that time good read by the defense of the pace setters, led by Brian Perrault and Chris Delgrazia. The two linebackers who pace the strength of their defense stuff that running play. They try to call this a misdirection play as you look at the replay. The guard, the right guard pulls and he's supposed to get in behind him. But the thing about it is because the play takes so long to develop, uh, the pace setters were able to, to, to scoff it off. So St. John's now will go third and four from the pace 20. Levine. Nice catch, but it will come up shy of the first down as David Anderson, the tight end, made the catch and dropped the football. Good hit then by Pace. Pace defenders reacting well to the ball. It was a slow developing play. I thought it was going to start out as a screen, but he hits the receiver that comes on the other side of the field, and I thought really that he didn't really have much room to get the ball in there, and I thought maybe he should have gone somewhere else with the play because that's the kind of stuff that really uh, hurts you when you only get a short gain on it. So John Ledworth will try the field goal. It will be an attempt of 37 yards on a slight angle to the left in a scoreless game. Kick is on the way, and it is good. John Ledwood makes the field goal, and on the year now, he is 9 of 17. As St. John's takes a 3-0 lead over Pace, with 6.14 to go here in the first quarter on this Thanksgiving weekend classic. Nice drive, Bill, by St. John's. Yes, I thought it was very good, because the thing about it is that when they made the big play with... Um, McPherson, they need to get points on the board to kind of take away the confidence from the pace setters, and I thought it was an outstanding job by uh, St. John's to get on the board early. All right, we'll come back in just a moment. Here come those hippies again. Is that you, Sunflower? Hey, come on! Oh, the place hasn't changed in 25 years. Yeah, yeah it's a shame. You know, they should have put in some condos by now. Joe, remember when we did this 25 years ago? No. Wouldn't it be nice if your youth was as easy to hold on to as a nice cold Pepsi? You think they'll go skinny dipping again? I hope not. 
At Premier Car Rental, we specialize in replacing your stolen or damaged car. We offer free delivery of your rental car wherever you need it, home, office, or repair shop, and we'll pick it up, too. Our courteous customer service professionals will provide you with friendly, hassle-free service and have you on the road in minutes. Premier Car Rental offers 95 and 94 models, compact to full size, and minivans, too, with rates starting as low as $24.99 a day. Ask about our weekly and weekend special rates. To reserve your car today, call 1-800-340-RENT. And remember, Premier Service is no accident. Still the greatest city in the world. What better place for a great university? A university with one of the leading colleges of pharmacy in the country. A top law school and nationally accredited schools of business whose programs are designed to meet the challenge of the new global economy. Plus affordable tuition. Yes, the city is New York and the university is St. John's. So they have reason to celebrate early on here at St. John's as they use a field goal to build a 3-0 lead with 6.14 to go on the first quarter. Along with Billy Taylor, this is Ed Ingalls, and now we're getting roasty, toasty warm, aren't we, Billy? That's exactly right. It feels good up here in the booth. It doesn't matter the weather down there, Ed. Now when you play the game, Billy, it certainly doesn't. You're pumped up. St. John's, of course, this is a huge game for them. They want to become the first team in the history of the school to win 10 games in a single season. Pace is pumped up because this would be a big feather in their cap if they could knock off this 1AA non-scholastic power. Inside the 10-yard line with the return, and not getting very far on that return, is Jason Flowers. So Pace will go first in 10 at the 21-yard line. And Ed, sometimes when the offense does what it's supposed to do and picks up points, it fires up the defense. It's a look, and it looked like on that kickoff return that the defense of St. John's is ready to go. So we're going to have to keep an eye on that because they, if they shut them down and get the ball over to the offense, the momentum will definitely totally be on St. John's side. Pace had hoped perhaps to burn St. John's with their over-aggressive play from this wing tee by getting him to react, overreact to the uh, triple option and uh, make some headway that way along the ground. But we've not seen the triple option yet from Pace. It's been more the double option. As this time, they're trying to send uh, Greg Phillips, the quarterback, handing off to Phil Hart off tackle. Phillips has played very little this year for Pace. Inexperienced. He has not played since the fifth game. He replaces Mike Mazarenka on uh, the quarterback spot as Walter DeForest made the stop for St. John's. As you look at the replay, the offensive line did a pretty good job. I, I thought that Paul Hart did an outstanding job of keeping his feet moving. Anytime you pick up four or more yards on first down, it really helps your situation offensively. Hart is considered a solid runner as Pace goes second and six. And this time the handoff coming around the right side is Chris Chapper, the big halfback who is 5'9", 196, the sophomore from Westport, Connecticut. And that was the same play, Ed, but the opposite direction to Chapa. Chapa did a good job of following his blockers, uh, picked up good yardage. He's close to a first down, and that's what they've got to do. They've got to use Billy Smith on the inside, try to get Paul Hart and Chris Chapa on the outside, use their speed. Offensive line has got to stay on their blocks and sustain them and allow them to at least be able to move the clock and keep St. John's bonded offense off the field. Another key to this game, Billy, will be how well the St. John's tackles are able to knock the pulling guards and tackles off the play. In this wing T formation, Pace likes to pull people. Yeah, and at the point of attack, they really have to be aggressive on the pulling guards and, 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 the, and the tackles. If they stop them at the point of attack, it's going to stuff the runner into the backfield and, and keep them w with penetration in the backfield to stop those running plays. Pace trying to get the chains to move, get something going offensively in this game. And so go, I believe Billy just came up short of that by inches, so they go third and inches after a nice run by Chapa, who on the season is averaging five yards a carry, has six touchdowns. He's an effective running back, especially for somebody who came here with uh, a job no more than the punter and say, hey, said to his coach, Lasardi, hey, coach, looks like you need some help here for running backs, and he volunteered to be one, and now he's the best running back that Pace has as they go third and inches. They give it to Smith, the big fullback. He gets hit at the line of scrimmage and a couple of good shots. Hard to tell if he made that. As coming up was Richard Rodriguez, number 20, along with Walter DeForest to put some good hits on Billy Smith, the big fullback for pace. 
Well, the thing about this one, we're going to take a measurement on it. Uh, when you're two and seven and you got third and inches, why not take a chance on doing something that will allow you to make a big play? Because you have nothing to lose. You want to put your players in the best position. I've always hated it, Ed, when a coach would try to run the ball right in the middle. Everybody knows you're coming. The people in, in the upper deck in the stands, they realize what's coming. Do something different. You can put eight men in the box around the world where up on the line of scrimmage, which is what St. John's was doing on that play. As again, it looks like they're going to come up short by inches, Bill. And as you said, they might have gambled and got a lot of yardage. And that time they came up with nothing. They're going to come away empty here on fourth down. Unless they gamble now, they're going to have to give up the football. I think it's, it's really imperative that they go all out today and they really do not leave anything back home because at this opportunity time, they have a chance to pull off a major upset against one of the top teams in the MAC conference. They heard you, Bill Taylor, because they're going to go for it. Mike Masaranka back at a quarterback now from this wing tee on fourth and inches. Pace trying to get it to their own 31-yard line. It's Masaranka trying to go for it as he sneaks. Runs into the entire center of that St. John's defense, but the signal is first down, so the gamble by Pace pays off. They move the chains. They go first and 10 as they get it across the 30 with 4.48 to go here in the first quarter. Clock running, St. John's leading Pace 3 to nothing. That was a big first down for the pace setters because they need a little bit of confidence going against such a good team as, as St. John's. Now this could propel them to open up the offense a little bit more and do a couple things. I thought it was a good job by the offensive line to get a surge to, to allow Mazarenka to get the first down. Nice job. That's a good call because Mazarenka is a big guy, 6'0", 200-pound junior. He's out of Laguna Hills, California. And he wants to throw, but he's got a lot of traffic, and he finally gets pulled down. I'll tell you, Mazaranka was not easy to pull down that play. A lot of red shirts chased him and finally nailed him for a loss. Randolph Howard, who's usually a good against the run, comes in to make the sack for St. John's. Excellent job of uh, St. John's pursuing the quarterback because what he did, he faked inside, faked the pitch outside, rolled out, had the option to run or pass, but because of the pursuit of St. John's and, and company, they, he, they were out, allowed him to uh, come up with the negative four yards. And that may be a hard play for Pace to run here today, the sprint. The quarterback sprint as they lose five on that. But they're going to come back with the sprint left. Here comes the pressure again. Dump off is complete to Chapa, who goes out across the 36-yard line with Steve Dombrowski, the 6'1 junior from Belmore, Long Island, makes a stop. I thought it was an outstanding drive by Mazarenko to get the ball off. He had a lot of pressure on him, and he kind of flipped it out to the halfback, and I thought it was a nice job because he easily could have uh, had a minus on that play. Nice job. He rolls out to his left which is hard to do. He sees that nobody's open. He avoids the rush a little bit, tries to stay with his block. He just flips the ball out at the last second, and that's what a good quarterback's got to do. Hits the ball to the chapel. He realizes he's the main man. Get the ball to him. Got eight yards, and the play brings up a third and five for Pace at their 37-yard line. They're going to give it to Chapa. He does a nice cutback, and Chapa's going to go for the first down as he goes into St. John's territory. A good move by Chris Chapa. He's not a finesse guy, not fancy, but he read the play beautifully then, Billy. Yes, he did, because he he, he was the, the, the halfback in motion, starts off to his right, and as you look at the replay, you see Chapa in motion. The play is designed to go and go off the, the right guard who's pulling and the tackle. He sees the, the daylight inside shows his peripheral vision, accelerates in the hole, picks up the first down, and that's why he's averaging over five yards a carry because he is that kind of runner who can see the hole with his peripheral vision. Chapa got 17 on that play before number 42, Kirk Ditzler, made the stop, so Pace goes first and 10 from the St. John's 45. Going up the middle, that was a nice half fake that time. I thought that was a good fake by Mazaranka, who has only played, this is his fifth game at quarterback, Hang the ball off that time to the big fullback, Billy Smith. Well, the fundamentals of quarterback, he's got to carry out all his fakes after every handoff because he has to make everything look like it's going to pass. And I thought it was an outstanding job by the offensive line. If they can continue to go right at St. John's, they can do a good job of moving the chains and keeping their, their good offense off the field. This is an offensive line that struggled early on, but it's getting better because they're sustaining their blocks more. They're reading plays better. They're going to try the same play with Smith bullying his way for yardage, and he comes up. Very, very close to the first down, Billy. Randolph Howard and Carl Volpe, the linebackers, had to finally pull him down. And you see the offensive line with Chris Adela and Mike Basso. They're doing an outstanding job of blocking. He reads the defensive end. The defensive comes up, so he gives the ball to Smith. Smith lowers his head, keeps the legs churning, and comes up with a big play for the pace setters. So Smith, who is 215 out of Lawrence Harbor, New Jersey, has been a tough guy to stop for uh, yardage losses this year. He's only lost five yards all year in terms of carrying the ball, being hit for losses. 
Uh, he's a guy that they felt had to do something today to get St. John's to respect the inside game. Smith is accomplishing that now as again Pace moves the chains for a first down at the St. John's 35. So the setters with their first drive of the day, Billy Taylor. I think this is very, very important for them to come out and get confidence, especially after St. John's went down the field and scored on a field goal. They started the ball, they started deep in their own territory, and this has got to get them confidence because they're doing a lot of different things. They're running to the right side, the left side, up the middle. Now St. John's doesn't know what to defend. This drive started at the 20-yard line. The other thing for Pace, too, is they're controlling the football and keeping St. John's high-powered offense off the field. This is Chapper following his blockers, and he goes down close to the 30-yard line. As you see, again, the power sweep. Ken Forte, the right cornerback, had to come up and make the stop. Well, Chapa shows you exactly how to read your lineman. He got in right behind him. He put his left hand on his back. As you look at the replay, he kind of slows down a little bit to allow uh, Chris Hardella to get outside and run, puts his hand right on his back, cuts inside, lowers his head, and accelerates and gets good yardage. That's exactly how you read your blocks and run off your lineman. So Pace has picked up 53 yards rushing the ball as we're down to 44 seconds to go here in the first quarter. This is Mazaranka, who likes the rollout. Doesn't get much on that. Spins for a couple of yards as he had some receivers down deep. Randolph Howard, the freshman from Bayshore, made the stop. The reason that play was successful is because they were running inside with Billy Smith and allowing Chris Chapman to do some damage. When that happens, he fakes the ball, rolls out to the right, and is able to get clear passage because of the running game doing so well inside. We're down to 15 seconds to go here in the first quarter on a third down situation, a third and three for Pace. Inside the St. John's 30, Pace setters have moved the ball here on this drive. They run from the wing tee. And most of the time we have seen a double tee formation, which is what you're seeing right now. And that will be the first quarter is history. St. John's ahead of Pace, three to nothing, but the centers are on the move. SunJet is proud to announce sensational airfares to brighten your day. Call 1-800-4-SUNJET, meeting your expectations with great low fares to the West. On SunJet, you can fly nonstop New York to Dallas from just $99. And to California, SunJet will fly you New York to Los Angeles from just $129. For sensational savings, call now. 1-800-4-SUNJET. Great low fares to brighten your day. Bart's going to show you how easy it is to save big money with whiz bucks. Let's clip them, Phil. Whiz bucks, a giant size way of saying nobody beats the whiz. Dial a mattress. Fast and convenient. I told him I needed a firm mattress. I needed it by tomorrow and reasonably priced. And next day, boom, I had it. Get low warehouse prices on Sealy Posture Pedic, Serta Perfect Sleeper, and Simmons Beauty Rest. 1 800 Mattress. Fast, easy, and a commitment to customer satisfaction nationwide, 24 hours a day. 1 800 M A T T R E S. I'd recommend them to anybody. What makes Santa 65 different from other health care plans, it's the people. They really put their heart into what they do. And the benefits are better than Medicare at no extra cost. I'm very impressed with Santa 65 and my doctors. They take care of me, the paperwork, and the bills. I like that. They'll even send a car to take you and bring you home. Now that's what I call health care from the heart. Medical care is delivered by a network of participating private practice physicians and other contracting providers. here at Red Storm Field, St. John's and Pace on this premier Thanksgiving weekend classic. Pace moving the ball from that wing tee. They now get third down in three from the St. John's 28. Fumble, but I think they recovered. I think Pace recovered the ball on the turnover. Pace had some problems this year mishandling the ball. In fact, Mazarenka, the quarterback, has been reluctant to make the pitch wide this year because of a lack of confidence that he can deliver the ball. But that's a no gain on the play. Brings up a fourth down as Pace recovers the fumble. That was a hard play to really run because there was so much misdirection in there. And the, but by the time he was ready for the handoff, uh, the quarterback, uh, Mazaranka, didn't even get it in there. You notice how I blame the quarterback. I yet. always do. Never blame the running back. <laughs> Here's Mazaranka. Getting pressure, wants to throw the screen, completes the pass to Smith. Smith trying to get yardage for the first down. I believe he comes up short, though, Billy. Nice play by Walter DeForest, the very fine middle linebacker for St. John's. Out of Bonita Springs, 
Frank Bucci made a good block, though, for Pace to try to spring Smith free. And Andy, Pace, as you, as yes, Billy. As you look at the replay, uh, I thought Mazaranka did an outstanding job of showing patience to set it up. Nice catch by Smith. He did an outstanding job of going inside his blockers and came close to the first down. Nice job. Good play, though, by Walter DeForest, the middle linebacker, to deny Pace of an important first down. St. John's takes over on downs at the 25. Pace is able to move the ball, though, 55 yards on that drive, even though they come up empty. This is McPherson to the bottom of the screen. He's a deep threat man for St. John's. Levine, number 11, is the quarterback. And each of the fullback, and the deep back is Creighton, and here is Creighton trying to pick a hole. Gets only a couple yards as good reaction then by the Pace defense, led by Reed Sands. The free safety, who is number three on the tackle list for this pace team, he's considered their best defensive back. And when you look at the replay, I thought they did an outstanding job of letting each of the fullback go right at him. And, and Creighton, even though he only picked up three yards, showed good acceleration in the hole and showed toughness. I think that's what they have to do to beat this pace setter team is to go right at them. So St. John's goes second and seven, just shy of the 25. Levine. Creighton with the catch. Blocked by Anitra. Creighton pulled down from behind as he gets the first down up around the 37-yard line. Good block then by Rigo Griggs, who did not start because of an ankle injury, but is in there now at offensive left guard for St. John's. Scott Myers, the 6 0 220 sophomore from Yorktown Heights, made the stop. And the thing about that is a simple flare pass to the halfback. Creighton goes out to the right side, stops, and runs inside the block by Anitra. As you look at the replay, uh, Anitra, he, he kind of gives him uh, uh, the traffic signal to kind of block for him and did a good job. The eight-yard pickup gives St. John's a first down as they again call on Creighton, but a good defensive pursuit that time by Pace as Chris Del Grazia, the very fine linebacker, Pace's all-time leading tackler out of Pleasantville, New York, makes a stop. I thought it was a nice job of, of uh, running right at them. I think their play calling has picked up a little bit better because right now they're doing what they should do, executing well, going right at them, uh, uh, not dilly-dallying, and, and really doing what they do best, which is run Creighton and get the ball to Anitra. That's a gain of five on the play. Sets up a second and five situation for St. John's. Levine gets Anitra out in the flat. First down St. John's. Across midfield into pace territory, and that's a play that the Red Storm likes to throw. That ball to Anitra, who makes his catch number 41 on the season. Brian Perron is a man pushed him out of bounds. And that is the bread and butter for St. John's. Anitra has done an outstanding job all year. I think Levine does a good job of, of, of just rolling out, bring, pulls out the right guard to give him a little bit of help. Gets the ball to Anitra. Anitra turns up immediately, picks up positive yardage, and a first down. A good drive by St. John's thus far. 14-yard pickup on the play. St. John's goes first and 10 with Creighton carrying the football. But again, the pace defense reacting pretty well to the inside stuff as uh, the linebacker, Peron, is joined by Lamar Williams. Williams is slightly large. Billy, 6'1", 294, and only a freshman. As they like to say, he's a growing boy. They think he's got the big body to clog the middle. They think he could be a good player in time, but perhaps he'll need a little more speed. And the only way you do that when you weigh 294 is to weigh a little less than 294, right? <laughs> So a gain of about a yard on the play sets up a second nine for St. John's. Levine wants to throw, and this fires as he tries to hit Aaron Hatwood. His speedy wide receiver throws it behind him, brings up a third down play for St. John's. That play was, uh, I think it was, it was a miscue between the quarterback and the receiver because the receiver turned inside and the ball was thrown outside. Sometimes when you uh, have a freshman quarterback, he does that. But Levine is not a freshman anymore. This is the 10th game of the season, and he has really showed a lot of poise throughout the entire season. Yeah, he has, but he really has developed since early in the season in terms of his reads, in terms of being patient. This time he's going to let Creighton carry the football. Nice defensive play back there as number 11 leading the charge for Pace to make the stop. Good play by Mike Mazaranka, who was the quarterback. But remember, he started the season as a safety and the best defensive back for Pace. So they brought him out, trot him out on the defense, and he goes both ways and makes a good play there, Billy, as he is the first man to get to Creighton. Finishing him off that time was Jamie Balaliciano. Makes the tackle. That brings up a fourth down situation for St. John's. As Pace did a good job defensively there, Bill. Yes, they did. Outstanding job. But Anitra missed the key block. And Creighton thought that 
uh, Nietzsche was going to get the block, and instead uh, the, his guy was able to make the tackle. This is Demikis getting off a wobbly punt after a bad snap. Demikis came in averaging almost 34 yards a kick. That will not help him any. As the clock is stopped with 10.52 to go here in the first half, St. John's leads pace 3 to nothing after a punt of 29 yards. When the Metro Atlantic Athletic Conference basketball season revs into high gear this winter, all eyes will be on the prize in Albany as the Marine Midland MAC Championship Tournament returns to Knickerbocker Arena March 3rd through the 6th. Make your plans and purchase your tickets now for four exciting days of March Madness as the MAC men and women fight for the conference crown and a trip to the NCAA tournament. For tournament information, call 518-487-2000. The Marine Midland MAC Basketball Tournament returns to Albany, New York, March 3rd through the 6th. Here come those hippies again. Test one, two, one, jazz. Is that you, Sunflower? Pink cat? Oh! The place hasn't changed in 25 years. Yeah, yeah, it's a shame. You know, they should have put in some condos by now. Joe, remember when we did this 25 years ago? No. Wouldn't it be nice if your youth was as easy to hold on to as an ice cold Pepsi? Do you think they'll go skinny dipping again? I hope not. At Premier Car Rental, we specialize in replacing your stolen or damaged car. We offer free delivery of your rental car wherever you need it, home, office, or repair shop, and we'll pick it up, too. Our courteous customer service professionals will provide you with friendly, hassle-free service and have you on the road in minutes. Premier Car Rental offers 95 and 94 models, compact to full-size, and minivans, too, with rates starting as low as $24.99 a day. Ask about our weekly and weekend special rates. To reserve your car today, call 1-800-340-RENT. And remember, Premier Service is no accident. Still the greatest city in the world. What better place for a great university? A university with one of the leading colleges of pharmacy in the country. A top law school and nationally accredited schools of business whose programs are designed to meet the challenge of the new global economy. Plus affordable tuition. Yes, the city is New York and the university is St. John's. And by... First down and ten for Pace as they give the ball to Billy Smith and a twisting move up the middle. Smith comes up very close to the first down as again we see Pace able to move the ball on the ground now against St. John's. Carl Volpe, the 5'9", senior from the Bronx, made the stop. And that's the key to Pace, the Pace setter's success. If they can get, get the ball, get the offensive line moving and allow them to get some holes for Billy Smith, Paul Hart, and Chris Chappa. They have a chance for an upset because St. John's is not as up as we've seen them in the past because I don't think they have a lot of respect for the pace setters. The pace setters have to earn it, Ed. Well, St. John's, of course, had a big emotional victory knocking off Wagner in the ECAC Bowl on Saturday. That was the biggest win in many a year for St. John's. Now they got to come back after three days' practice and get a the pace. That was a first down gain of 11 yards, and this time the quarterback, Mazaranka, trying to go for it, but... Chris Carew, number 41, very quick from his defensive end position, makes the stop. As you look at the replay, he simply gives a hand fake to Chapel, rolls out a little bit to the right, sees there's nothing down, tucks the ball, and picks up positive yardage. I thought it was an outstanding job by uh, Mazarenko because there was nothing there, and he created something and, and, and at least allowed them to get positive yardage. Bear in mind that Mazarenko now is going both ways as the quarterback on offense and the safety on defense. Mazarenko, 6'0", 200-pound junior out of Laguna Hills, California. Has rushed the ball 75 times this season. Pretty good running back from the quarterback position. His timeout is taken on the field, taken by Pace with 9.41 to go here in the first half. St. John's sitting on a 3 to nothing lead over the setters. And Ed, the longer this goes like it is with, with both teams going back and forth and St. John's is holding a very slim lead, it's going to give confidence to the pace setters. If they can get any kind of confidence and realize that they can play with the Red Storm, you never know what's going to happen in the second half. Well, especially if they can control the football as they've been able to do on the ground, Bill. That's what Pace wants to do. They want to keep the ball out of the hands of St. John's offense because, as we all know, those of us who want St. John's offensively, they have some weapons that can explode for the big play. Pace figures their defense can't be out there too long and stop St. John's. They've got to keep their defense off the field. Their offense has to control the football, and right now they're doing some of that. Well, the longer it goes like this, the more that they're going to tell themselves that, that maybe we are better than our record of 2-7, and seven, and maybe St. John's is not that good. And I think any time that happens, it gives you a chance to get some momentum. Pace has picked up 67 yards on the ground. They've not thrown the ball too often. Mazarenka is 2 out of 4 for 13 yards. He is a decent passer, 
but I don't think Pace wants to make a living on throwing the football today. So Pace now goes second down and seven. With Smith trying to barge in there, rather Chappa trying to find some running room. Nice fake by Mazaraki. He certainly faked me out. Chris Carew made the stop. And Chris Chappa, the best ball carrier for Pace, gets a little yardage up the middle. I like that play, Ed, because what they do, they try to fake the sweep, and they allow Chapa to come back up the middle. It allows the defense of St. John's to pursue, then you come back underneath, and you try to surprise them by doing that. I thought that was a good call. Picked up good yards, but this is a key third down and short. Chapa now four carries for 29 yards. We talked about the fact that uh, Pace wants to run some misdirection, get St. John's to over-pursue, and they've been somewhat successful with that today. On a third and five situation from their 35, Mazarek off a good fake, throws intercepted by St. John's at the 45-yard line. Is Volpe with the football, and St. John's turns away pace and gets themselves good field position. But there is a flag on the play, Bill. I thought the play action was perfect, but he threw the ball a little bit short. He did have a receiver a little bit behind Volpe, and I thought that the ball was a little bit short. Otherwise, it would have been a first down. As you look at the replay, he had time to throw, gave an inside fake to the fullback, Billy Smith, rolls to his left, takes his time, throws the ball a little bit short. A nice job of getting up in the air by Volpe to, to, uh, to make the interception. They certainly do a lot of faking pace, don't they, from that wing tee? I, I like that offense because it's very creative. The quarterback has got to make the proper read because he's got to read the defensive end on certain plays up the middle and, and, and then enable him to pitch it out if he needs to. Well, St. John's will retain possession of it, but the penalties against St. John's obviously coming after the interception by Volpe, who has his first interception of the season. Penalty puts the ball back at St. John's territory at the 49-yard line, and it's a clip against the Red Storm. The defense of St. John's is the key all day. They've, they've halted pace setters every time they begin to make a move. So the defense of St. John's is the reason why they're 9-1. and one. So St. John's goes first and 10 at the midfield with 8.51 to go in the first half and leading pace 3 to nothing with Levine the quarterback. He can give it off to Creighton to find some running room and wedges his way down to the pace 45-yard line where Brian Perrone, 6'2", 232-pound sophomore, out of Rochelle Park, New Jersey, makes a stop. That was a quick inside trap, and I like the quick plays that do not take a lot of time to develop because it, it allows the running back to get in and out of the hole very quickly, and usually you should pick up a minimum of four yards if you use that quick hitter. Well, they got six yards on that, and Creighton, of course, has become very explosive on that first step, so it's a play which uh, really is designed for him to be effective, the quick hitter. Here it is again, with Creighton trying the left side, but that time the defense is waiting for him along with Chris Grazia, the linebacker up to make the stop. They tried to make that one on the opposite side, Ed, but that defensive line uh, did a good job. Lamar Williams, that nose guard, that big 290-some-odd pound nose guard, is using that weight and moving it around. As you look at the replay, it was a quick hitter to Creighton. Uh, the nose guard, number 78, comes over, and also the right tackle. And number 17, linebacker Chris DeGrazio does an excellent job of filling the hole. So it's third and two for St. John's as they put Hatwood at the top of the screen as a flanker. McPherson at the bottom as a flanker. And Levine is going to throw it to Anitra. He's got to get a yard. He's got the first down inside the 35 as Anitra gets the first down before he gets belted out of bounds. But a nice pickup. Chris Weaver, the defensive end, 60205 senior who uh, really loves to hit people, along with Jamie Balaliciano, make the stop. The offensive line, uh, Rico Griggs, John Irving, Michael Carter, Steve Kaplan, all of them did an outstanding job. Look at the time that Levine has. He has time to serve the heel. Uh, Anitra comes out from the other side across, does an outstanding job of making a move on him, cuts inside, picks up valuable yardage, first down St. John's. A 13-yard pickup gives the Red Storm a first down at the pace 31-yard line. That's a trap up the middle with Creighton finding running room as he keeps his body very low and breaking tacklers. Nice run by Creighton inside the 15-yard line as now Jermaine Creighton out of Windange is starting to roll, Billy. Well, once you running back gets through the hole without the defensive line getting penetration, as you look at the replay, again, it's just a trap play inside. The, the tackle comes out, does an outstanding blocking job. Uh, Creighton keeps his legs moving, lowers his head, really shows determination and shows you why he's one of the top runners and the best freshman in the MAC conference. Well, Creighton has now carried the ball 12 times for 44 yards. Luke Kalicki made the stop. Red Storm on the move. First and 10 of the base 13. Pace showing blitz. Anitra takes it down around the 10-yard line. Drops the ball on the ground, but the whistle had already blown, so there's no fumble on the play. 
as Brian Perone comes up to make the stop. Perone's the kind of guy who talks a lot, walks the walk, says, I'm the man. I'm the defensive leader on this base team. And when you act that way, you better be able to play. And he certainly has this year. He's their leading tackler. Came in the game with 124 tackles for the season. A good job by Pace, pace by, by defensing the Nitra because they had just run outside with Creighton. Now they stopped the inside with the Nitra. So that's a four-yard pickup. Sets up a second and six for St. John's at the pace 10. This is Creighton. Nice tackle brings him down from behind as Chris DeGrazia, the linebacker on the other side, who's an outstanding player, comes in and makes the stop. Watch the replay, Ed. On the replay, if Creighton takes the ball immediately outside, he's got room to run, but he hesitates, fakes it back inside, and then he tries to get back outside, but it's a little bit too late. The pursuit catches up with him. But initially, Ed, if he had took the ball and run outside, I think he may have reached pay dirt. He had a lot of room over there. And with his speed... A nice ankle tackle by DeGrazia, who really knows how to wrap you up and put you away. Makes it a third and five for St. John's at the 10. Levine wants to throw. Wants to go for six. He's got it. McPherson with another touchdown catch. That is the 40th career touchdown catch by John McPherson, 160-pound junior out of Valley Stream, New York. He is my favorite receiver, Ed. All year long when we've done St. John's got games, he has come up with play after play in crucial situations. It was an excellent job by Levine. As you look at the look at Levine, he fakes inside to the fullback. He holds the linebackers. Watch the linebackers. They don't even do anything yet. Then he sees McPherson come out to the corner, puts the ball right on the nose, and he knows that McPherson can catch the ball if it's even close to him. And I think McPherson shows you exactly what a receiver does. Catches the ball in his hands. Touchdown, St. John's. McPherson with the soft hands the ability to get open and Levine rolling out to his left which is tough to do roll to your left for a right-handed quarterback made a fine throw so John Ledworth will try the extra point it is good and Ledworth has kicked his 23rd extra point of the season and St. John's has built a 10 to nothing lead over pace with 537 to go here in the first half we're at Red Storm Field on the St. John's campus in Queens New York Premier Car Rental, good service is no accident. We'll be right back after this. From its beginnings as the first Catholic college in America, Georgetown has been open to students of every religious persuasion. That's its Jesuit tradition. And faithful to that tradition, Georgetown has had teaching at its heart for over 200 years. And something wonderful happens to students here. You can see it. And not just those students who earn Rhodes and Marshall scholarships. All students benefit. Georgetown University, America's oldest Catholic university. goes 51 yards in seven plays for that 10 nothing lead. Red Storm now picking up the yardage, Billy. They have 175 yards total offense. 52 of that has come on the rushing and 123 yards passing. But you know, Ed, I talked about at the beginning of the game how they kind of dilly-dally at the beginning. They try some trick plays. When St. John's settles down and they run right at the defense, that is when they're most effective. Uh, throwing the short pass to a Nietzsche or running Creighton both inside and outside, letting Levine pick and choose his opportunities. That is when St. John's is at their best. I think they're not doing well when they try to use the misdirection and the, the trickery plays. I think sometimes Bob Ricker tries to go away from what he feels is a strength just to try to get the defense to react to that and uh, not be prepared to stop the straight. As the kick is taken by Flowers, breaks out of the pack, and nice run by Flowers comes up short of the 40-yard line, and so Pace has good field position, but I think this is a big series for Pace, down 10-0 with that wing T formation. They can't afford with the offense they run to get down too far, Billy. That's exactly right, and this is giving uh, St. John's all the momentum. I thought that was an outstanding job of running the kickoff return. For any young person that's watching, you need to get up in that wedge as quickly as possible. Do not dilly-dally, and really turn it on the first opportunity you see daylight. Good field position at the 39 for the Pace Setters. Nice return by Jason Flowers as Jason Contos made the stop. Pace goes first and ten from their 39-yard line. They sent hard in motion, but they give it to the big fullback. But that time, St. John's is waiting for Billy Smith. A whole slew of red jerseys led by Steve Dombrowski, Walter DeForest, and Ray Lambright. Really the strength of that St. John's defense makes the stop. But just to reiterate, Ed, when the offense does an outstanding job of going down the field, putting points on the board, the defense gets inspired by it, and you see it by that last play because Walter DeForest and uh, Dombrowski and Lambright were all right there, and they're ready to play right now. Excellent point, Billy. They certainly have picked themselves up emotionally after being down a little bit early on. 
Pace will go second down and nine yards to go down from the 40. They try to come back with Chap on a slant. That's a play that worked earlier. Gets a couple of yards, but Steve Dominguez from his strong safety position, who is very good at stopping the run, comes up and makes a stop. Outstanding job by Dominguez of filling the hole at the strong safety position. That's the kind of stuff that really takes running backs' hearts away because when you take that kind of hit in this cold weather, you think about maybe playing tennis or golf or something like that. In another location, not That's, here. Oh, in Florida or California <laughs> or Arizona. <laughs> Only you would play tennis outdoors today, Billy. It would have to be a very quick first set. Third in long yardage for the setters as they try to come back on that little inside handoff, but there's not much there. They go with the... Paul Hart, number six, the 5'10", 180-pound sophomore from Mayapak. He runs into Carl Volpe. Fourth down is here. Means Pace will have to kick it away from their 45. And this is a very good defensive series by uh, St. John's, the Red Storm's defense. They were all over and They didn't allow anything to happen. No penetration. And that's what you have to do defensively. Now you turn the ball back over to your offense, and you know right now you have the momentum, and you must capitalize it. All right, Chris Chapa has to punt into the win. He punted very well in the first quarter. He'll kick it away to John O'Leary, who has a 71-yard punt return for a touchdown against Iona this year. You see the difference. That's not much of a kick. And Pace will not get any bounce on that one. St. John's will go first and 10 from their own 31 with 3.32 to go here in the halftime after a 24-yard punt by Chris Chapa. So St. John's up 10-0 over Pace. All right, Billy, you're St. John's, and you really have established your offense at this point, haven't you? The things you want to do, you're now able to do. And you do not go away from that. You do the same thing you did last series until they stop it. Football coaches are known for doing repetition until the defense is able to take it away. And what they've been su successful with is Creighton running off tackle, and there it is again. A quick hitter with Creighton going across the 35 as he picks up yardage. Finally pulled down in the secondary by Pace. But not before he picks up big yardage. As now we see Creighton starting to roll here. Billy's he's up to 52 yards in the game. As you look at the replay, he goes off the block of Carter and uh, uh, Rico Griggs. Picks up excellent yardage. Does a quick hitter and uses his good speed. That's an eight-yard pickup. The other thing St. John's has done well is throwing the ball in the flat to Anitra and going long to McPherson. That's their bread and butter plays. Here's Creighton again on the trap up the middle. Getting the first down as he goes out to the 45-yard line. Chris Weaver from Terrytown, New York, makes a stop. And, Ed, you do this play, and if it's successful, you're picking up four or five yards of pop. You do it till the cows come home until the defense is able to stop it. Well, since it's early, the cows will not be coming home for quite some time, Billy, right? <laughs> this, we could play three games here today, Bill. Well, maybe too cold for the milk to come out. <laughs> First and ten for the Red Storm at their 44. Here they go again with another little inside trap, and Creighton breaks it. Inside the 40, inside the 35, and a first down for St. John's. And Mike Mazarenka, the quarterback in safety, and made the stop that time, but not before St. John's moves the chains again. As you look at the replay, he runs behind number 53, Mike Carter. It's an outstanding block. Big hole comes through, shows acceleration, and you play. That's the same play they've done three times in a row, and I tell you, now it's up to the pace setters to make an adjustment to stop it. Then when they do, you counter by going outside with an e -trip. Well, that was a 22-yard gain by Creighton. Pace has really split their front four, but they got a wide set there, which sets them up for that. Now they come back to, this time, Anitra on a similar play, and he lunges inside the 30. Anitra got that all on his own because there was no running room there at all before he runs into John Gagan, who's checked back into the pace lineup after uh, injuring his ankle. As you watch Anitra on the play, he was stuffed at the line of scrimmage. Outstanding job by the Pacers, but they did not wrap up. He missed a couple tackles, kept his feet moving, kept low to the ground. You watch his feet keep churning. That inspires the other members of your team. The defense gets inspired, the offensive line, and really that propels them to gain momentum. So Anitra gets five yards all on his own, setting up a second and five for St. John's. As McPherson is the deep man, he's running for loose again, makes a fine catch inside the five. McPherson with a little fake to the inside, breaks it to the outside. Jamie Valoliciano how to make the stop, but not before McPherson gives St. John's a first and goal situation at the pace three. Outstanding job by both Levine and McPherson. As you look at the replay, McPherson has a seven-step drop. Uh, McPherson goes into the post, holds the safety back outside to the corner, delivered right on the money by Levine, and shows you, they, I tell you, they're moving very well. They've got all the momentum now. Everything is clicking for St. John's. A 26-yard pickup on that pass play. This is Creighton. He's got Pater, and St. John's has a 16 to nothing lead over pace. 
I think he listened to us on that last one, Ed, because the outside has always been there for Creighton. Anytime they had the ball, they hand, they hand it off to him on the sweep. He's able to get outside that time. He didn't even hesitate. Touchdown. St. John's has really picked up the pace right here, and they've got everything going for them on this Thanksgiving day. Nice quick drive for the Red Storm. 56 yards in five plays as Creighton goes in. As you look at the replay, on the handoff, there was nobody there. He barely got touched till he got to the end zone. That's how a running back likes it, to not even, nobody, not even get touched by a defensive man. Benham have to wash your jersey when the game's over, huh, Billy? <laughs> Ledworth will try the extra point with 107 to go here in the first half. Put it in the good column, and St. John's has a 17 to nothing lead over pace with 107 to go in the first half. And St. John's has taken control of this game in the second quarter. The Red Storm seeking a 10th win on this season, which will be the most in the school's history of football. Well, Ed, they are off to an outstanding start. The defense is playing well. The offense has picked it up. Everybody's on all, all cylinders right now. And when a team is, is playing well like, like St. John's has done this season, they're 9-1. and one. They've got all the incentives in the world to up their record to 10 wins. This is really, really the, the culmination of a great season for the Red Storm. And now the pressure's on pace because, as we mentioned, running a wing T formation, uh, they may have to abandon that at some point, Billy, but down by 17 points. That's not a good formation to come back from a big deficit from. No, it isn't. They're going to have to create something off offensively by throwing the ball down the field. But if you do that, you're playing right into the Red Storm's hands because they've got some great defensive backs for the Red Storms. You'll see Flowers to the near side on the kick return and Mentakitis to the far sideline as Ledworth will kick off here on a day that people remember as the first day of winter of this season. Cold and windy. But so far, St. John's is not feeling the call. I would say that Pace, though, is feeling some chills at this point. When you're losing, you seem to feel all the adversity, but that much more, don't you, Bill? Absolutely, and I've been in that situation many, many times. Not you, Billy. You know about winning. Let's see, you play with the Giants when they were down. You play with the Jets when they were down. Play a little bit with the Raiders when they were what? When they were up. They uh -huh. were up. That was my only time. Okay, so you went out on a winning note, Billy. <laughs> we, never add, we, never add, let's see, we never add up the wins and losses of your eight-year career in the NFL. I wonder what that would be. Uh, I think I'd be on the negative side because it was too cold too many times <laughs> and too hot some of the times. Here's Ledworth with the kick. Taken by Flowers. Coming up a fine return early. Gets smashed down. No, that time he gets across the 20 and down he goes. So Aaron Hatwood was the man who made the stop. His pace will go first and 10 from their 21-yard line. And there's only 61 seconds to go here in the first half. And Ed, this has been a quick first half, but you see that St. John's is playing at the highest level we've seen them all season. Everything is working for them. Their special teams, offense, defense, that's why they're winning 17 to nothing. Well, I'll tell you, the coaching job Bob Rick had done this year is outstanding. He's had a marvelous record here 17 years at St. John's, but this may be as good a coaching job as he's done with a team that was not expected to be anywhere near this good. The handoff goes to the big fullback, the battering Ram Smith. As Walter DeForest wraps him up, and it looks like uh, Pace will just try to run, run out the clock here in the first half, Bill. Well, see, I don't agree with that because, you know, they're 2-7 and seven on the year. They have nothing to lose in this situation. They should at least try to go up top and take a chance. You cannot get a touchdown running the ball deep in your own territory against a very good Red Storm defense. So 47 seconds to go now as a timeout is taken on the field. Timeout by St. John's. Yeah, that's a quick first half, and I think because both teams are running the ball very effectively, and when you run that, uh, the offense that the Pace University runs, it's conducive to getting the clock moving. Well, it's a windy day, as we've mentioned, and so far only 17 passes thrown here in the first half. 12 by Mark Levine for St. John's, who must think it's a balmy, balmy warm day in Florida because he is 8 of 12 for 150 yards throwing the ball. But for Pace, you can see this is a problem, but they have to throw the ball. Mazarak is 2 of 5 for only 13 yards and one interception. I'm anxious to see what the Pace University coach uh, Greg Lasardi does at halftime to make an adjustment because, you know, they haven't really tried to open up the offense. The defense has really uh, gotten beaten both uh, up, up front on the offensive line and the, and their receivers are beating, uh, beating uh, St. John's, I mean, beating Pace, Pace uh, pretty well. I asked Lasardi before we did the interview in the pregame show, what would you do if you get way behind this game? because the wing tee is not suited for throwing the ball. He said, we're not wedded to it. We'd do something else. We would make an adjustment and come back with a different formation if we had to. We'll have and to keep a note on that. I gotta let Smith run the draw play. Not much there as he comes up shy of the 30-yard line with the clock running. Stephen Demikis 
who has made 44 tackles coming into this game, a very physical ball player, comes up, makes a stop from his strong safety position, as St. John's again stops the clock with 35 seconds to go by calling a timeout. And Ed, St. John's wants more. They're playing at a very high level. They don't want this half to end in because everything is going right for them. On the other side, when uh, you run the ball in these situations, all you're doing for the running backs is creating a better statistical situation because they're going to let you have four or five yards at a pop as long as you don't get anything deep. Well, St. John's doesn't want the season to end, let alone this ball game, the way they're playing. Oh, they they, would, they'd like to roll right through December. Ed, they have played extremely well basically all season, but this is the best that we have seen them. And I think it, you save your best for last, and it's a shame that, that Marist and St. John's didn't play toward the end of the season. Yeah, that would be a very special game, I think, those two teams in the MAC who tied for the regular season title. The Marist beat St. John's earlier in the season, so Marist was declared the MAC champion. I don't know if Marist could do that now, though. Ed. Here comes the spread formation. We've been waiting to see in this uh, third down situation with 35 seconds to go as they put triple flanker right. And they sent Chap in motion. They're going to Chap a carry the football here. And he breaks a couple of tackles. He's got two men to beat. Doesn't beat them as he gets out to midfield before Ken Forte and Richard Rodriguez lug down Chapa. But uh, the clock is down to 25 seconds. Now Pace wants to go hurry up. From the 49, they spike the ball. Mazareka slams it to the ground to stop the clock. So now it's Pace that wants to stop the clock. A minute ago, it was St. John's one to stop the clock. Well, like I reiterated earlier, Ed, any time that you get in a situation like this, you're down by more than two touchdowns and you're running the ball, the defense is going to let up a little bit because they're going to allow you to have the inside stuff, but the defensive backs are taught to keep everything in front of them. So that's why I think that, that it's not really a good situation for Pace because all they're doing is, is padding their stats. Gave him on the last run by Chapa, 21 yards. Sets up a second and 10 situation with only 20 seconds to go in the first half. And now do you air it out if you're Mazarenka? I think you have to. As the man opened and dropped inside the 40, had a receiver open, dropped the football. The pass was intended for Frank Bucci, the tight end out of uh, Thornwood, New York. He dropped the ball. Ken Forte was the man covering Bucci. He had to hit him in a bad spot, his hands. <laughs> Sound like you're talking about me, Billy. <laughs> 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 or maybe my mouth would be a bad spot. <laughs> Third and ten for pace with 16 seconds to go here in the first half. And I would suspect that Mazarakum will try to go upstairs again. He's going to get hit from behind in a hurry. Gets rid of the ball, but good defensive pressure by St. John's and what could be the last play of the half unless they call a timeout. They do with uh, six seconds to go. I'll tell you, Anthony Ferrara, with his first stop of the day, picked a good time to come up and make the hit on the pass of Mazarenka to Smith. Didn't go anywhere. In fact, they lost some yardage on it, three yards on the play. Sets up a fourth and long with six seconds to go. Pace will talk about it. And on that play also, Ed, DeForest came on the blitz from outside that time. He had a clear shot at Mazarenka, and that could have been one like that Dave Brown situation Monday night when he laid him out, but he didn't hit him as hard as the linebacker for the Houston Oilers did, and I think uh, Mazarenka was able to get up. You don't see many kids at this level sticking a helmet into somebody's chin like the NFL. There's a big difference at this level. They don't go out to try to maim somebody, get him out of the ball game. Well, maybe the his, NFL, they do. Well, maybe his wife didn't need a new pair of diapers or something. I don't know. <laughs> Not his wife, his kids, excuse me. I didn't want to... So it brings up a fourth down situation for Pace, trailing 17 to nothing, Billy Taylor. I thought the uh, highlight of the day might have been the pregame show doing the interviews down there in that cold weather. I was wondering to see who was going to freeze up first, the two coaches or you or me. I'll tell you, that wind was coming out, and that was probably, I think at that time, the wind chill had to be around five degrees or less. And those are tough situations, Ed. I think the wind, though, has died down some, which will help this football game be played. And really, I would say to this point, the weather's not been any really appreciable factor in this contest. No, it's all a mental thing anyway. It really is. The psychological part is whoever thinks it's no big deal has a better chance. So on fourth down, with six seconds to go in the first half, pace will go. Mazarenka. Throws it out of bounds on the last play of the first half. And so St. John's will go back into their cozy, warm locker room with a 17 to nothing lead over Pace. 
Next time on Star Trek The Next Generation. So what's the cause of my headache? I haven't the slightest idea. An old enemy is playing tricks with the captain's mind. <laughs> in a deadly game of revenge. You murdered my only son. Now he's forced to relive a terrifying battle. Look for a silver sphere. Destroy it! On Star Trek The Next Generation. Tonight at 10.30 on TV 55. Now when you open a fleet checking account, about the only question you'll be asked is... File or window? Because right now when you open a fleet checking account, you not only get banking that's quick, convenient, and easy, you also get big savings on Delta Airlines, wherever Delta flies, with over 800 branches, access to 70,000 ATMs worldwide, 24-hour phone banking, and now big savings on Delta, no other checking account flies so high. Are you tired of all those phony, so-called psychic phone lines? Well, so are we. We are the American Association of Professional Psychics, and we are the real thing. Don't be fooled by highly paid celebrities. This is the one, the only one with certified authentic psychics. Experience the difference of a real psychic reading. Call 1-800-773-7887. The call is free. Call now. Bart and I are going to make you real happy. Right, Bart? Right, Phil. We're going to save you a lot of money. Right, Bart? Right, Phil. How? Whiz bucks, Bart. Giant size savings from Nobody Beats the Whiz. Giant size savings, Phil? Over $2,000, Bart. TVs, camcorders, computers, audio components, cameras, cellular phones, music and movies. Just cut out the whiz bucks and save money. Right, Phil? Right, Bart. Whiz bucks, a giant size way of saying Nobody Beats the Whiz. Welcome to Halftime with the premier Thanksgiving weekend classic. Joining me now is the Executive Director of Athletics and Academics Equal Success, Mr. Leonard Genova. Mr. Genova, what is AAE all about? Athletics and Academics Equal Success, Billy, is a New York nonprofit. carries he tries to break Anthony Russo's freshman rushing record as you see Pace has had some success throwing the ball early Pace though has been unable to establish a passing game whereas Mark Levine is 8 of 12 for St. John's throwing the ball St. John's an area they do very well in no turnovers the first half they're number two in the country in turnover ratio we'll be back with more right after this here come those hippies again And Jack, St. John's has an opportunity to win 10 games for the first time in history. Yes, it will be history if we uh, win today. Bob's taken a very, very young team and parlayed them with a couple of uh, uh, veteran linemen and had a, just a marvelous season. And we're certainly hoping that the second half will go as well as the first. You got a lot of young guys on, on St. John's that should be good next year. Yes, our quarterback, uh, Mark Levine, is a uh, freshman. And uh, Creighton, the running back, uh, the leading running back, is also a freshman. So we're hoping that they can lead us again next year and a couple of years after that. What about the other athletic events at uh, St. John's? Well, uh, this year, for example, the uh, women's soccer team and the men's soccer team both won the Big East Championships. We're very proud of them. Starting uh, uh, tomorrow where, uh, with the Joe Lapchin Memorial uh, Tournament, uh, our basketball team gets started. They're highly rated. Felipe Lopez, Zendon Hamilton, and Tariq Turner are three highly rated freshmen. They're joining some good veterans, and we're hoping for a very successful season for Coach Brian Mahoney. A lot to look forward to at St. John's. It certainly is, and uh, we hope all the fans will come out and help us. And thank you, Jack. Thank you. Let's go back upstairs for the second half kickoff. Well, most banks are fine for advice on checking your savings. When you want a second mortgage, insist on the mortgage bankers. Champion. Because we're mortgage bankers, we can offer rates and services most banks can't. Using mortgage bankers is definitely the smarter way to go for home equity loans. We have programs people never even hear about at savings banks. Call 1-800-CHAMPION and you'll have the easiest, most professional experience you've ever had borrowing money. Could you expect this kind of treatment from a savings bank? 
When your bank says no, champion says yes. If you've been hurt by anything, a car accident, a fall, a doctor, a hospital, you may be entitled to a large cash award. To find out, call 1-800-LAWYERS right now. The call is free, the advice is free, and we stay open 24 hours, 7 days a week. We're open New Year's Eve at midnight. So call 1-800-LAWYERS. We're there right now to answer all your questions absolutely free. 25% off. Cheap John's is taking 25% off almost every item in every store. This Friday, Saturday, and Sunday only. And that's 25% off Cheap John's already super low everyday bargain prices. 25% off holiday decorations and gift items, housewares, toys, school and party supplies, health and beauty aids, and more. Shop Cheap John's first this weekend because 25% off at Cheap John's is like 70% off anywhere else. 25% off everything Friday, Saturday, and Sunday only at Long Island's bargain store, Cheap John's. We Dianetics by L. Ron Hubbard and get the answers that have changed the lives of millions. Buy your copy today wherever paperbacks are sold. Welcome back here to the second half of the premier Thanksgiving weekend classic. Premier car rental. Good service is no accident. All right, the second half kickoff. John Lidbeth will kick it off for St. John's. Backing up and taking it inside the 10-yard line on a reverse. Handoff faking the reverse is Matakitas as he comes up along the sidelines out across the 20. Drop, trying to fake the ball to Flowers. Brought down by Brian Collins. So pace trailing 17 to nothing. Goes first and 10 from their own 25-yard line. Now for Pace, the problem is to generate some offense to get back in this game. And from the wing T formation, it's more suited for a running game than a passing game. So we'll see what adjustments Greg Lasorti, the coach of Pace, has made here at halftime. He said that he would make some adjustments if need be and get away from the wing T and go with a passing game here in the second half. Well, he's going to have to because he's down 17 to nothing, and St. John's is playing at a very high level, Ed. On the first play, though, he goes back to running Billy Smith, the big fullback, who averages almost five yards a carry off the right side. I think he wants to establish the running game if he can a little bit before he goes upstairs. Lasardi, Lambright made the stop. Bill, after gain of five yards, nice to back you uh, here, Billy, get you up where you belong back in the booth. Absolutely, it's uh, freezing down there. After talking to the St. John's AD, Jack Kaiser, at halftime. So it's second down and five for Pace. Again, they go to the big fullback, Smith, trying the left side, but that time the red shirts read that one nicely as Walter DeForest, the middle linebacker, out of Bonita Springs, Florida, and Randolph Howard out of Bayshore, Long Island, come up to make the stop, and that forced a third and long situation now for Pace. And they seem like they're still in the same game plan that they had in the first half. They're going to get back in the game. I know they're trying to stay with what they do best, but if it gets any kind of more, uh, uh, with any kind of difficulty, they're going to have to go up top. Mike Masaranka is the cornerback. He started the game. He's the junior who also plays defensive back. A two-way performer for pace on third and three. Over the middle, complete for the first down, and then drop. Let's see if it's a loose ball. They ruled it incomplete pass. As for the second time today, Frank Bucci had his hands in the ball but could not put it away. Ken Forte, though, came up and put a pretty good hit on Bucci to make him cough it up. I think that Bucci didn't have his mental attitude together because that ball was right in his hands just like the other one. And sometimes when you're not ready to play in this type of uh, climate, you really lose your concentration, and I think that's what's happened. Sometimes that happens to pass receivers, Bill. Brings up a fourth down for the setters now with 13.38 to go in the third quarter. Chris Chapa, who did well kicking with the win in the first quarter, not so well against it, will kick against it here in the third quarter. John O'Leary, the dangerous punt returner for St. John's, awaits it. O'Leary with a fair catch, takes it at the 32, and St. John's goes first and 10 from there. 
I didn't think he had to call a fair catch on that, Ed. I thought he had room to run on that, but I think he didn't get the communication from his up back. So a 36-yard punt by Chris Chapa, and the Red Storm goes first and 10 from their 32, leading 17 to nothing. And we saw St. John's offensively move the ball very well in the second quarter. More importantly than moving the ball, they scored. They capitalized on their opportunities. But, Ed, we've seen St. John's have some lulls in the third quarter offensively. Yes, we have, particularly against, Saint, against Georgetown here when they won that game after some shaky moments in the third quarter. Levine has some room gets the first down as he scrambles out to the 44 yard line where Chris DeGrazia the 5'9", 205 senior makes the stop outstanding job by Mark Levine because he took his time, surveyed the field saw that nobody was open and finally tucked the ball and run as you see it, he had a straight 7 step drop he's looking to his right, looking for his favorite receiver McPherson, McPherson is double covered he stays in there long enough, looks at his second receiver the, the nose guard, Lamar Williams comes up, tucks the, ball, tucks the ball and Levine picks up a first down so the quarterback picks up 12 yards in the scramble and St. John's goes first and 10 from the 44 yard line as Creighton tries to play that worked well in the first half, that quick hitter on the inside but that time only gets a yard or two well this this half has got to be the half that Creighton uh, has a chance to set that freshman record and I hope they do give it give it to him enough time for him to have the opportunity well Creighton needed 118 yards going into the game to break Anthony Russo's freshman rushing record set back in 1990 and right now Creighton has 85 yards so he needs about another 35 yards to set the record certainly on pace to do that and St. John's goes second and eight from their 46 Go hatch. Levine has time. And complete. Couldn't sort it out, though. Levine certainly was not being pressured much. He finally miscommunicated with David Anderson, his tight end. Well, I thought the play fake that Levine gave was outstanding because it held the linebacker that was blitzing. When he did roll to the right, there wasn't much separation between the receivers. you got to have more of a difference between uh, the receivers where they are. They were too far together, and that really just made it uh, hard for Levine to get the ball in there. He had all day to throw that pass. So they'll third and eight now for St. John's as they go from their 46-yard line with 12-14 to go in the third quarter. They split the running backs, Anitra and Creighton. Levine has a man open. Goudis is complete for the first down. Tom Goudis, the 5'10", 174-pound senior, is pulled down finally by Jason Flowers and Chris DeGrazia. Flowers was a backup safety starting at cornerback. He lacks the speed to match up with some of the split ends. As he might have had some problems there covering Goudis. But he is a, uh, a hitter. Good hitter is Jason Flowers. If you were watching this game for the first time, there's no way you think that Mark Levine was a freshman. He showed great poise in there, put the ball right on the money, picked up the first down, really showed the confidence of a veteran quarterback. And gets 17 yards on that pass play for St. John's and a first down. Got to open as he completes the ball this time to Dave Anderson, the tight end for the first down. A nice pattern then, Billy, as St. John's moves the chains on two successive plays before Joe Melfi makes the stop. As you look at the, the replay, uh, Creighton goes out to his right side on a little flare palace. He looks a little bit to his right, comes back to the tight end underneath, throws a perfect pass, another first down for St. John's. That's what they do at the beginning of a, of a half, Ed. They start out uh, and they kind of mix it up, and then they come back to the running game. So St. John's picks up 11 on that play. They'll go first and 10 from the pace 26-yard line. They put McPherson to the top of the screen, Gadis to the bottom, and Levine with a big drop that sets up a screen to Anitra. Flag is thrown as Anitra goes down the 21-yard line. Pushing on that St. John's apparently on a block. Rather obvious there was a penalty against St. John's for pushing on a block. Mike Cotter may have been the man who committed the infraction for St. John's, the 5'10", 197-pound guard. That was a very, very slow developing screen. I thought there should have been more separation from Anitra to, from his offensive line. As you look at the offensive line, Levine drops back about almost 12 yards, and that's a little bit too far because what you need to do is drop back and then gradually go back a little further. He throws the ball to Anitra. There's not much separation between Anitra and his offensive line, so he doesn't allow them to work as much as they could. Should have got more yardage, but the penalty brings it back in. Anyway. On the replay, you can see that Mike Cotter was the man who made the block from the backside and picks up the penalty, so that erases the play. St. John's gets taxed back to the pace 31-yard line. Well, and they'll go now first down and 15 from there, Bill. And Anitra's got to sit back a little bit more, take his time, show some patience on the screen in order for it to work. St. John's has been able to gobble up the needed real estate on one chunk here lately, a 15- or 20-yard pass play. Here's Anitra. He'll catch it on the left side. 
He won't get it all back, but he gets inside the pace 25-yard line where Crystal Grazia and Jamie Balaliciato make the stop. There's another penalty on the play, Ed. Yep. Flag drop in the St. John's backfield, too. As you look at the replay, I like Anitra catching the ball. Because they have so many weapons on St. John's, they're not able to key on Anitra, who, who is a great pass receiver out of the backfield, picks up the and gets back closer to the original line of scrimmage, but they're going to bring it back because of a penalty. Yeah, referee comes over to say a couple of words to Bob Brickett, the St. John's coach. The Red Storm players backing up, so the penalty will go against St. John's. It'll be a 10-yard penalty. Well, Ed, I guess when you go in at halftime and you get all warm in the locker room and you come out in the second half, it's kind of hard to get those bu those muscles warmed up again. I think you're absolutely right, Billy. I think on a nice day, it's not a factor. But I do think on a cold, windy, blustery day, when you take a halftime break, it does take a while to get restarted. So the holding penalty sets St. John's back in a first and 25 situation as they give it to Creighton. He's got daylight. Inside the 15-yard line, Creighton hunting for daylight, found it. Jason Flowers finally had a go-around and pull him down from behind, just as it appeared Creighton might go all the way. I tell you, as you look at the replay, the offensive line does an outstanding job. Both guards are pulling Michael Carter, John Irving, the center, Rico Griggs. Uh, uh, Creighton sets up the block, puts a move on the quarterback of, of pace, and shows his acceleration and speed, and he's got to be well over 100 yards, Ed. He's got the record. He's got 119 yards in this game, needing 118 yards to break Anthony Russo's record, as Creighton on that play picked up 22 yards. So he is the all-time freshman ground gainer for St. John's, unless, of course, he loses some yardage between now and the end of the game, as Anitra carries, and Lamar Williams, the nearly 300-pound nose guard, makes the stop. But St. John's on the move, leading 17 to nothing over pace with 9.40 to go in the third quarter and the clock running as St. John's has it down to the pace five-yard line. As we talked about earlier, they're running inside and outside, and when they go right at the pace setters, that is when they're most effective. Second and goal for St. John's. They put McPherson out to the left at the top of the screen. They split the running backs, Anitra and Creighton. This is Levine. Levine very close to stop inside the five-yard line. You hear a sigh by the crowd. They thought he might have gotten in there as a flag is thrown again against the, in the St. John's backfield. And uh, that may come back. St. John's has already taken two penalties on this drive, Bill, yet been able to overcome them. Yes, and that's a sign of a good ball team because usually it's hard enough trying to beat another team normally, but when you have to beat them, when you got to pick up third and long, second and long, it really takes a lot out of you. But it's, they show you that they've got uh, one heck of an offensive system by being able to pick up the first down each time. Well, that's a coach's no-no, a holding penalty on a running play. But as we've talked about in the past, Billy, we've seen a lot more of that the last couple of years than we used to see years ago, holding on a rushing play. And the reason for that, Ed, I feel, is because the offensive linemen are allowed to use their hands, and that sometimes is a is a a weird situation because you don't know where the hands can extend to. So it is second down for St. John's now. They're back at the pace 19-yard line, and Levine would like to go upstairs for this one. But he is hit and dropped. Good pressure that time, but the pace defense, good job. It gets rid of the ball finally, and it's out of the flat. It is complete to Tom Godice. Nice play by Levine, who was in trouble, managed to deliver the ball to Godice. Really a great play by the St. John's passing corps that time, Billy. That looked like a play was going nowhere. Yes, it did. As you look at the replay, uh, uh, even though he, he had a seven-step drop, I thought Tom McPherson was open on that same post corner, but he took his eyes off him very quickly. He really just threw the ball out to Creighton, on a, uh, which I thought was a fumble. But uh, what looked like a fumble in the replay. But I guess the referee didn't look to the same game we're watching. They got they got a break on that one. Third down is here for St. John's at the pace nine yard line. Levine in trouble. Down he goes. Nice rush that time by Pace. Blitzing in from his end position. Chris Weaver got free that time and drops Levine. So for Weaver, he has his third sack of the year, or third sack of the day, actually, in the fifth sack he's had. This season, Chris Weaver, 60205 senior from Terrytown, New York, makes the big defensive play for Pace, sets up a fourth down situation for St. John's. And remember, they had a long way to go, so they'll go with a field goal here as they bring on their very fine kicker, Ledwith, who has kicked one field goal in this game. John Ledwith will now try for his second of the day. And that kind of evens it out, Ed, because that pass was definitely an incompletion. Yeah, on the replay, it looked awful. <laughs> 36-yard kick on the way by Ledwith. No good. So Ledwith made the first one, misses that, and Pace dodges a bullet here with 8.05 to go in the third quarter. But trailing St. John's 17 to nothing here at the Red Storm Field and St. John's University. 
Yeah, that was really something because I didn't see it until I saw the replay, but usually they try to use a little shuttle pass to throw the ball to the running back, but he threw it, his arm went forward, the ball hit the ground, which in my mind is an incompletion. All right, we'll come back in a moment. When the Metro Atlantic Athletic Conference basketball season revs into high gear this winter, all eyes will be on the prize in Albany as the Marine Midland MAC Championship Tournament returns to Knickerbocker Arena March 3rd through the 6th. Make your plans and purchase your tickets now for four exciting days of March Madness as the MAC men and women fight for the conference crown and a trip to the NCAA tournament. For tournament information, call 518-487-2000. The Marine Midland MAC Basketball Tournament returns to Albany, New York, March 3rd through the 6th. Here come those hippies again. Test one, two, one. Is that you, Sunflower? He cut! Oh, the place hasn't changed in 25 years. Yeah, it's a shame. You know, they should have put in some condos by now. Joe, remember when we did this 25 years ago? Country yeah. Joe McDonald. No. Wouldn't it be nice if your youth was as easy to hold on to as an ice cold Pepsi? Think I'll go skinny dipping again? Yeah. I hope not. At Premier Car Rental, we specialize in replacing your stolen or damaged car. We offer free delivery of your rental car wherever you need it, home office or repair shop, and we'll pick it up too. Our courteous customer service professionals will provide you with friendly, hassle-free service and have you on the road in minutes. Premier Car Rental offers 95 and 94 models, compact to full size, and minivans too, with rates starting as low as $24.99 a day. Ask about our weekly and weekend special rates. To reserve your car today, call 1-800-340-RENT. And remember, Premier Service is no accident. Still the greatest city in the world. What better place for a great university? A university with one of the leading colleges of pharmacy in the country. A top law school and nationally accredited schools of business whose programs are designed to meet the challenge of the new global economy. Plus affordable tuition. Yes, the city is New York and the university is St. John's. First and ten for Pace on the 20-yard line. As they go back to Smith, the fullback, who makes the bull tough run, fumbles the ball. Big pile up St. John's signaling they've got the football, and they do. Coming out of the bottom of the pile with the football is number 46 for St. John's, Randolph Howard. So Howard has a pass interception and a fumble recovery. As Smith tried to twist and spin, finally yielded the football, Billy Taylor. When you're when you're trying to get that extra yardage, sometimes everybody's after the ball. you got to wrap up with both hands. He had one hand over the ball with the pursuit coming, and he's got to wrap up with both hands. Good job of pursuit by St. John's of everybody going after the ball. So back come the Red Storm with first and ten at the pace 23-yard line. Mark Levine, the five freshman quarterback, is number 11. Anitra, the fullback, is 34. Creighton, the running back, the tailback, is 22. There you see Anitra. Takes a while to get him down. He didn't get much, but he certainly kept his feet. And Chris Weaver was the man who put the brakes on the fullback, John Anitra, after a pickup of several yards. Crystal clear day for football. Still windy, but it certainly has warmed up a bit. Wind chill factor temperatures on the uh, single digits early on. St. John's now makes a change and puts Robert Moltisanti in and has a wide receiver at the bottom of the screen. But they go to the meal ticket, Creighton. He's trying to get outside, can't, no, he pulled down on a fine defensive play that time by Reed Sands, number two. He's out of Brooklyn. He started the season playing with a broken hand. He's healed from that now. He's tough. He's a hard hitter. He's the best defensive back for a pace, Reed Sands. I thought Reed Sands made an outstanding open field tackle because Creighton had the momentum going forward. Looked like if he had got by him, by Sands, he would have been able to pick up some big yardage. So I have to give Sands a lot of credit for a nice defensive play. So now it's third and four for St. John's. From the pace 17-yard line, McPherson is out to the left at the top of the screen. O'Leary comes as a slot on the left side. The right side is Godice, and they throw it to Godice, but a bad pass out around the ankles, and he makes a catch of it. Nope, they ruled incomplete. Looked like Godice made a nice shoestring catch, and for a moment some indecision by the officials, but they ruled an incomplete pass. Brings up a fourth down for St. John's. 
And let's see if they send in Ledwith to try the field goal, or will they go for it here? As you look at the replay, I thought Levine really made a bad pass. It was probably one of his few bad passes of the day. The ball did hit the ground. One of the referees didn't see it, but the one who had the better angle came and made the call. So on fourth and four, this time St. John's will not go for the field goal. Billy, they'll go for the first down from the pace 17-yard line. Again with a three-wide receiver formation. Lean with time. Goes over the middle to his meal ticket for the first down to McPherson. Tom McPherson running a pattern that he runs so well, Billy Taylor. He's tough to defend on that over the middle. That was a beautiful route that McPherson run and a really nice pass by Anitra. As you look at the replay, it was a simple three-step drop. Uh, McPherson ran quickly to the post, what they call a quick slant, put the ball on the money, man-to-man -man coverage, first down. Gutsy call by Bob Ricca. So now Mark Levine has passed for 185 yards on the day. That was a 13 completion to McPherson as they go first and goal to go. And they give the ball to the meal ticket. Here's Creighton, but he can't get around the corner. Good defensive play that time by Jamie Balaliciano. The 5'8", 165-pound freshman helped out by Brian Perone. You know, it's easy to see up here what you're supposed to do. I felt, if you look at Creighton, when he gets the ball, I think he should cut immediately off of Nietzsche's block. If he cuts up, he gets his shoulders north and south and, and is, has a possibility of getting in the end zone. Instead, he was east and west, and his momentum was not going the right way. Now, you can't run over anybody going east and west very often. So St. John's goes second in goal to go from the pace four-yard line. And Nietzsche is the up back. Creighton is the deep back. They'll try Creighton again. He does not get to the promised land. He stopped at the two-yard line as he tried to pick his way through there. But good defensive play by Pace. They reacted well to the play. And that was kind of funny because on that one, he listened to us. He made the cut, went north and south. But the outside was open on that play. And as you look at the replay coming up, uh, he, he, w he had the outside there. But he chose to cut up inside to get his shoulders north and south. If he went outside with a Nietzsche, the fullback, he, he probably has a chance to use his speed to get inside the end zone. The linebacker is Perone and... DeGracio made the stop that time, so now it is a third and goal to go for St. John's at the pace three-yard line. Levine wants to throw for it. Pass incomplete. Try to hit John Anitra, his fullback, but it now brings up a fourth down situation for St. John's with 4.48 to go in the third quarter, but the Red Storm leading 17 to nothing over pace. As you look at the replay, I thought that Nietzsche should have had it. Just knowing that Nietzsche through the games that we played all season, he's got the kind of hands where he can make the play. The ball was a little low, but I thought that he should have received the ball and caught it. The defensive back did make a good play, and that dwarfed the play. Yeah, I thought maybe the defensive back uh, stopped him on that one. Here's Ledwith with an angle to the right. It is not a long kick. It's only about 20 yards. And that one is good. So John Ledwith has his second field goal of the day. He's attempted three, and St. John's has padded the lead over pace. 20 to nothing here with 4.42 to go in the third quarter. And, Ed, it's time now for Coach Greg Lasardi to abandon the wing tee and stop running Billy Smith in the middle and start throwing the ball to the receivers. But Frank Bucci, the number 88, has got to start catching the ball. We'll be back in a moment. In a war that tore a nation apart, he was a scoundrel captain. The reckless, ruthless Rhett Butler. You should be kissed and off. Burning with desire. And by someone who knows how. Driven by destruction. A devastating fight to the finish. Clark Gable is Rhett Butler. In the classic legend of love and war. Gone with the wind. Don't miss the conclusion tonight at 11.30 on TV 55. SunJet proudly announces sensational airfares to brighten your day. Call 1-800-4-SUNJET, meeting your expectations with great low fares to Florida. On SunJet, you can fly New York to Orlando from just $79. SunJet also flies New York to Tampa St. Pete from just $79. And SunJet's nonstop service to Fort Lauderdale starts at only $79. For sensational savings, call now, 1-800-4-SUNJET. Great low fares to brighten your day. Back here at Red Storm Field, John Ledwith is kicking it off into the sun, waiting for it as pace inside the 15-yard line. Trying to get back up and breaking for some running room. A nice return out on the kickoff. Jason Flowers was back there to take the kick along with Brett Hartman. It was Hartman returning it. That's the first time we have seen Hartman today. 5'8", 160 freshman from Wayne, New Jersey. Gives pace a first and 10 situation. Here's a reminder, be sure to stay tuned to WLIG TV 55 this evening as Matthew Broderick and Alan Ruck team up in the Ferris Bueller's Day Off on TV 55's primetime movie at 8 o'clock. 
So Pace goes first and 10 from their 36-yard line. Here's a play they've been running all day, and they give it to Hart. No running room as they continue to go with the running game, Bill. Paul Hart found no room and loses a yard in the play. Well, maybe what they're doing, they realize the clock is moving and the turkey is in the oven at home, and they want to get there quickly. Well, I'm sure a lot of fans are happy to hear that, as cold <laughs> as it is to move this game along. Anthony Ferrara, who's 6'3", 234-pound junior defensive end for St. John's, made the stop there. So it's second and 11 for the setters. As they try to get their offense going, they really only had one decent offensive uh, foray today without a chance to score in this game. They give it to the fullback, trying to run upside, and the inside is Smith. But St. John's closes the hole with Walter DeForest, the middle linebacker. You know, they were talking to the Pace coach, and he said, we made his first year here, of course, with Pace, and he said, we made progress in a couple of areas. One is in the number of personal fouls we've taken. Last year, in a game against Wagner, Pace took so many personal fouls that Wagner kicked off from the Pace 35-yard line. <laughs> I've, I've never seen that, I've Bill. never heard of that, Ed. And that's one I might be able to kick in the end zone. <laughs> Third down and 10 for Pace now from their 35. They have to pass, Ed. I would think so, but let's see. Mazaranka is not passing. Instead, he gives a little delay to Chapper, who's had some success, but he comes up short of the first down. Chris Champa, number five, the 5'9", 196 pound sophomore, runs into John Yandretis. As you look at the replay, this does not fool anybody. It's a straight uh, handoff to Chapa. It's a delay a little bit. And really, uh, he had too far to go to get the first down. It allows the defense to catch up with them. Uh, the pursuit of St. John's is just too quick for the pace setters at this point. What this says to me, Billy Taylor, is the fact that uh, Coach Greg Lasardi doesn't have too much confidence in his passing game. Exactly. To trust it in a situation where it's an obvious passing down. And they're going for it in fourth down. Fourth and two. And now the unexpected. As Mazarenka looks, though, it looks like he wants to roll out and run. But now he throws and he has a man wide open. It is complete to Hartman. He's inside the 15. And finally, Mazarenka takes out his pitching arm, makes a beautiful rollout completion to Bret Hart, the freshman. Stephen Domikas had to make the stop. Why couldn't they do this before, Ed? Uh, it was an outstanding job by Mazarenka as you look at the replay. He fakes inside to Chapa, and then he rolls to his, his right. I thought he was going to tuck it a run since he had a fourth and about three. He puts the ball on the money in a crucial situation when it was fourth down when they had to turn the ball over. Nice job by Mazarenka, and I thought it was an outstanding job of, of really calling a key play in that situation. Well, perhaps the reason why they waited to then, it was unexpected, certainly, after going on the ground so much, you were looking for a running play. But with three wide receivers to the left, Mazarenka will roll out to the strong side. This time he'll run out of bounds, slide out of bounds, and around the 10-yard line. But that was a big play on the last one, Billy, as they picked up 42 yards on that Mazarenka to Hartman pass, the biggest play for pace today. As you look at Mazarenko on the replay, he's really just trying to find anybody. He's literally running for his life. Everybody's covered, does a good job of trying to get back to the line of scrimmage, and uh, picks up a good four yards. So Pace has their best opportunity to score in this game, going second down and six from the St. John's 10-yard line. 11 is Masarenka. He gives it to Smith, the fullback, but he runs into a whole host of red jerseys, led by Ray Lambright, the 6'2", 266-pound senior, who's from Flushing. And Ed, the, the, the wing tee is supposed to be a reading play for the quarterback where he reads the defensive end. I didn't feel that Mazarenka read the defensive end that time because if he did, he would have pulled the ball from the fullback and pitched it out to the halfback because the outside was open on the play. The one thing they haven't done today is the pitch, the option pitch, the third option, pitch to the trailer back because they don't have a lot of confidence. Mazarenka does it. He doesn't feel comfortable making the pitch in that play, but that's something we thought we'd see today and we have not as Chapra tries to get inside the five and goes in for the touchdown. Chris Chapa following his blocking beautifully that time went in to score from 10 yards out and so Pace is on the scoreboard. It's 20 for St. John's, 6 for Pace with 1.16 to go in the third quarter. And you know, Ed, one thing I have noticed about Chapa, and if you look at the replay, he does an outstanding job of following his blockers. He's as good as anybody as getting in the hip pocket of his two guards that are pulling. Chris Hardella gets right on the hip, then explodes off of the block, gets into the end zone, and act as he acts as if he's been there before. Yeah, they did a fine job then by uh, Spiropoulos. And Hodella, the guards, of opening the hole for Chapper. But see, I would Chapper go for will two try now, the eight. extra point. I would too. But Chapper's going to. There it is. They were the listening fake. to us. <laughs> Here goes number eight, trying to go for two. Yes. Knocked down, though. Couldn't get to the end zone. The holder, trying to take the ball and run it in, is knocked down, short of the goal line. So they tried the two point play with Chris Weaver, 
who plays defensive end, and also the holder can't make it to the promised land as Walter Frost knocks him down, and uh, St. John's will hold a 20 to 6 lead over pace. This is a touchdown. It was a strictly a lead sweep for uh, Sir Chapo. He gets in behind the guard and the tackle, go, gets right on their hip pocket, accelerates in the hole, gets into the end zone, seven points. I thought it was a good opportunity for them to go for the two points, but the guy who was running the ball looked like he had lead boots on because he was pretty slow on that one. And it looked like it might have taken him a while to get around the end to get there, Bill. <laughs> Could have had a turkey bone maybe with the thigh bone before you got there, right? But I'll tell you this, the criticism we gave Pace for being too conservative, we were wrong because they go 73 yards in nine plays for a touchdown. They get on the scoreboard, and I'll tell you, the pass that Mazaranka threw for the touchdown, I, I'm sure surprised a lot of people because he does not have a reputation of being a long ball thrower. He is a converted defensive back, did not get the quarterback job until after the third game this season, and certainly on a roll out there, he made a splendid throw. Well, I agree with you totally, but I feel that this is the last game of the season. They have nothing to lose. They need to pull everything out of their repertoire offensively to try to do against St. John's. St. John's is a very good team. You can't be conservative and even have a chance to win. But as we know, when you play St. John's, the time you want to strike against the Red Storm is the third quarter because that seems to be their weak quarter, doesn't it, Billy? They lost a game up at Marist in the third quarter after being tied at halftime. Marist came out, got three scores in the third quarter. Also, we saw Georgetown come back on them in the third quarter. The Chapa hits a squib. St. John's will come up with the ball inside the 30-yard line, and they'll have real good field position as they take it out across the 40-yard line. Well, St. John's will go first and 10. This is a key series for St. John's because pace, the pace setters have got a little momentum. They've got on the board for the first time. Their defense needs to come in and stop St. John's Red Storm and allow their offense to at least have another opportunity to put something back on the board. If they do, it, we've got a good ball game, but with only 109 left in the third quarter, that's the only time left they have to do something because the fourth quarter is the Red Storms. John Yandratis was the up man to return that kickoff and give the Red Storm real good field position. First and 10 from the 42-yard line. Levine taking his time and going to throw the bomb over the middle. It is underthrown as he tried to hit Tom McPherson, who again was running free down the middle. He had man-to-man -man coverage because of the play fix, so he had plenty of time to throw. And, and Levine does have a good arm, so I was a little shocked on that, that he was able to come up short. See, to me, he did not have real good mechanics throwing that ball, Billy. Yeah, and I thought he had plenty of time to throw. The offensive line did an outstanding job, but he just came up short. So now the Red Storm will go second and ten from their 42. 102 to go in the third quarter. This is Creighton. And he gets some yardage. He already holds the freshman rushing record for St. John's as he picks up five on the play. Got a nice block then from Michael Cotter, the undersized guard at 5'10", 197, who has made the conversion from the defensive line to right guard as a starter and done a good job at it. I thought it was a nice t job by Creighton because he lined up about eight yards deep in the backfield, and it took him a long time to get to the line of scrimmage, but once he accelerated, he picked up good yardage. So St. John's will go third down and four after Creighton rushes for six, and now Creighton has 130 yards on the day. He went for 144 against Wagner in Saturday's game of the ECAC Bowl game. Pass is complete to Godis, and that will give them a first down on a nice quick hitch pass that time from Levine to Godis, and St. John's moves the chains. I thought it was a very quick uh, quick pass by Levine. As you look at the replay, he just takes a quick three-step drop. Uh, Godis, Godis just gets out there, runs a square out, puts the ball on the money, turns upfield as, as soon as he catches it, picks up valuable yards and a first down. Well, the 12 yards give St. John's a first down. As Levine now has gone over 200 yards for the day passing, he's up to 208 with 13 seconds to go here in the third quarter. St. John's on the move again. This is Creighton again. That time he couldn't wiggle free as he gets only a couple of yards and what should be the last play of the third quarter. So St. John's picks up a field goal in the third quarter. Pace picks up a touchdown, but fails on a two-point play. And we have St. John's leading Pace 20-6 to six after three quarters. Bart's going to show you how easy it is to save big money with whiz bucks. Let's clip them, Phil. Whiz bucks, a giant-sized way of saying nobody beats the whiz. Siemens turns the season's biggest shopping weekend into the season's biggest savings weekend. It's Siemens Holiday Super Sale with savings so spectacular you can afford it all. 
gift-giving, entertaining, and great new furniture for the holidays. And Siemens has gifts for you. No down payment, no interest, and no payments till February 95. Plus, Siemens Peace of Mind Guarantee makes your purchase risk-free. It's the season's biggest savings weekend. Siemens Holiday Super Sale, where we give the gift of savings. It's Siemens Best. So, the fourth quarter about to get underway, along with Billy Taylor, this is Ed Ingalls. Jeran Creighton had the wind knocked out of him, so he comes out of the game briefly as Levine goes back to pass. Incomplete. You know, Billy, in making the comparison between these two outstanding running backs, Anthony Russo, who set all the rushing records for St. John's, including the freshman rushing record, which Jermaine Creighton broke today by rushing 130 yards at this point. Creighton is kind of a laid-back, unassuming player. Russo was upbeat, always you knew he was around. In a close game a few years ago against Kings Point, he told his teammates in a huddle he would run the next play for a 90-yard touchdown. And bingo, presto, Russo did... He did so by breaking 13 tackles on the play, still scoring from 90 yards away. That well, is determination, Ed. Yes, it sure was. As now we have determination in Jermaine Creighton returning to the lineup, too, after that being shaken up two plays ago. He's over the middle, but they go the other way to Anitra. He's inside the 35. Close, and he gets the first down on sheer power as he pulls his way inside the 30, inside the 25. Tom McPherson, the wide receiver, made a nice block on that play to help Anitra get the first down for St. John's. And as you look at the replay, this is their bread and butter. Uh, Anitra goes to the right, comes back on a crossing delay pattern across the middle. Uh, Levine puts it on the money, and Anitra does more, breaks more tackles than anybody we've seen, does an outstanding job of moving forward. As far as Creighton and Russo, I think that Creighton is playing with a better offensive team because they have a very, very well-balanced offense, and that makes a difference when you're you're a key man in the, in the backfield. Sure does, as St. John's goes first and ten now from the pace 22, and they give it to Creighton. But no running room that time. Good defensive pursuit by pace to bring down Creighton. In with a stop is Scott Myers, the defensive tackle who Coach Lasardi told me is probably the best ball player he has on the team. Myers, 6'0", 220 sophomore. Uh, he's the kind of player that uh, gets good pressure on you. He's not big, but he's quick, a solid player. They're worried about him being trapped today, and I think sometimes in that first half we saw that where St. John's was able to trap Myers. That's You're exactly right. Soccer! So a gain of nothing on the play brings up a second and ten for St. John's at the pace 21. Creighton again. Again goes nowhere on a beautiful hit. That time the linebacker, Chris Grazia. 5'9", 205, senior from Pleasantville, really sticks it to Jermaine Creighton. As you look at the replay, the left tackle, Dan Ryan, does not hit anybody. Now, you expect your fullback and your tackle to open up things, and you kind of expect things from him. Anitra didn't hit a soul. Dan Ryan did not. And when your running back goes out there expecting you to make the block, and you do not, that's when you get headaches. Yes, he was exposed that time. A two-yard loss brings up a third and 12 situation for St. John's at the center's 24-yard line. Keep an eye on the man to the top of the screen. Pass is caught by Tom Godis, as that was the man we told you to keep an eye on. On that pass pattern, Mark Levine with a nice throw. Gets it inside the 15-yard line for St. John's. Not enough for the first down, though. As you look at the replay, uh, he gives an inside fake to Creighton. Rolls out, has the option to run a pass. Godis has the deeper pattern, puts the ball a little bit low. Godis goes down and gets it and uh, really picks up valuable yards. Now they have a fourth and short. I feel they should go for it because they have the lead. They're deep down in territory. This could put the icing on the cake if they can take this in, Ed. So a 10-yard pickup brings up a fourth down and two situation for the Red Storm at the pace 14. 12.44 to go in the game. St. John's leading 20 to 6. This is Creighton. Bobbles the ball. Pace comes up with a bouncing ball. It's grabbed by number two, Rick Sands. Sands is off to the races. He can go. He may be caught from behind. Let's see if the Pearson can run him down. The Pearson does inside the 10. But Reed Sanders picking up the ball in the bounce. Gives it to Perone. Perone goes down. And Perone makes a block as Reed Sanders makes the return. Perone with a good block. Sands, as we noted a few times before, Billy, is an outstanding defensive back, and he showed it on that one. Yes, he did. Uh, Creighton uh, fumbled the ball. He didn't have the ball wrapped up very well. Uh, Sands picked up the ball, rumbled the long way, but you could tell that somebody jumped on his back at the end because he definitely slowed down and tightened up. I felt if he maintained his speed, he would have been able to take it in, but it was a nice play, and there's a penalty somewhere. Well, give McPherson credit for running down Sands and making the tackle after Sands picked up the ball 
inside the 10-yard line of pace and returned it down inside the St. John's 15-yard line. On the replay, on the replay, if you watch, Creighton has the ball, and he didn't wrap it up well. He gets into traffic, did not protect the ball as well as he should. The ball came outside. Nice job uh, by, picking, uh, by uh, Chris Weaver of knocking the ball loose. Sands picks up the ball right on the money, runs it in. You should never have a clipping the, a penalty when a man is way ahead of you, so I thought it was a, a, a terrible uh, call for the pace setters. Yeah, it sure was. Uh, getting it down inside the St. George 10-yard line, the clip sets up a 15-yard penalty backs up pace to the 29 yard line of st john's so pace will go first down in 10 from the red storm 29 with 12 22 to go here in the fourth quarter mazarika comes over the middle hits chapa and he goes inside the 10 yard line i'll tell you what if you wonder maybe why we haven't seen more mazarika throwing the football today billy because he certainly has thrown the last couple of passes very well as rudolph howard made the stop Actually, that was his second receiver. He was looking at the out pattern at the top, but he saw Chapa come back over the middle, get open, threw the ball perfect, first down. But they have to get something out of this, Ed, if they want to be able to, to change the momentum over to their side. They still are a couple touchdowns behind it, but they've got to get come out of this with seven points. Mazaranka now 5 of 12 for 65 yards, and he gives it back inside as they come outside on the fake and get the touchdown. A nice play for Pace. Off the beautiful fake and Pace is back in this football game. And a sweep around the end for the touchdown by Mazaranka as he keeps the football and goes in to score. So Pace is on the board again, Billy. And I talked about him not reading the defensive end. If you read the defensive end and he comes down, you have to pull the ball from the full, fullback's uh, belly and take it yourself. And as you look at the replay, he's reading it. He gives the ball inside, takes it out of his belly, takes around the end, has the halfback chopper with him, doesn't have to use him, shows his good speed, goes in for six points. They get this extra point. They're down by less than seven points. Have a chance, really, to take the lead with a good option, a uh, good chance by... by uh, St. John's. Chapa will try the extra point kick. It's on the way. It is good. So Chapa converts and we've got a ball game. St. John's 20, pace 13 as Mark Bernardini fell down on the play that time, Bill, allowing Mazaranka to get around the corner and go in for the touchdown. I thought it was a great read by Mazaranka because he was reading the defensive end on the play and then he took it out of the belly of Billy Smith and then took it around the end. I think that now the momentum can switch over, but this is a, a chance for, for a championship caliber team like St. John's to show what they're all about. We'll come back after this. Here come those hippies again. Is that you, Sunflower? Pink cat? Oh. Police hasn't changed in 25 years. Yeah, yeah, it's a shame. You know, they should have put in some condos by now. Joe, remember when we did this 25 years ago? Country yeah. Joe McDonald. No. Wouldn't it be nice if your youth was as easy to hold on to as an ice cold Pepsi? You think they'll go skinny dipping again? I hope not. At Premier Car Rental, we specialize in replacing your stolen or damaged car. We offer free delivery of your rental car wherever you need it, home office or repair shop, and we'll pick it up too. Our courteous customer service professionals will provide you with friendly, hassle-free service and have you on the road in minutes. Premier Car Rental offers 95 and 94 models, compact to full size, and minivans too, with rates starting as low as $24.99 a day. Ask about our weekly and weekend special rates. To reserve your car today, call 1-800-340-RENT. And remember, Premier Service is no accident. There's so much new at Iona, it's hard to know where to begin. Our new dorm is great. There's space for 300 students. We have international programs, too. I earn credits in Ireland. We compete in Division I sports with 20 teams for men and women. Small classes. Most are under 20 students. Academic excellence, nurturing the mind. That's our mission at Iona. The truth is in the people at Iona. So, back here at St. John's University, a fumble becomes a big play. Reed Sands returning a St. John's fumble by Jermaine Creighton. Ran it back some 80 yards to set up the second touchdown here on a nice run by Mazarika for pace. As you look at the replay, uh, he had the read all the way. He faked the ball inside the fullback, and that made everybody come down. 
They try to squib kick then, Billy, but St. John's recovers. The ball bounced off the foot of a Red Storm player, quickly recovered by St. John's. Anthony Ferrara, number 55, comes up with the football. So here's the situation. St. John's in good field position, first and 10 from their own 46. There's plenty of time to go, 11.46 to go. St. John's, after building a big lead of 17 to nothing, finds himself back in the game as Pace is scratched back. It's 20 to 13 St. John's, but Pace certainly has some emotion now, Bill. I, I thought for sure that that was a gutsy call, but you got to do that when you're 2-7 and seven and have nothing to lose. So let's see what the Red Storm can do. They've answered the call almost all year long, and now they call a play they haven't done too much today. The fullback, Anitra, barges up the middle, and it gets some yardage. He runs into Chris Del Grazia and Chris Weaver, who both of whom have played fine defensive ball, especially here in the second half of pace. And as I, as I say right now, this is an opportunity for Bob Ricker to go back to what he does best. If he's going to control this game, he's got to control the line of scrimmage with his offensive line by going right right at the pace setters, and then once he gets them uh, back on their heels, then go for broke. Now, Jermaine Creighton is out of the ball game at the moment, Billy. Creighton, of course, uh, had the wind knocked out of him, also injured his ankle. His ankle has been wrapped, but at the moment, he is sitting down on the sidelines. Now he's getting up and going in the game, and he'll come in now for St. John's. So Creighton is back in the game. After the last time he carried the ball, he fumbled it away and gave Pace an opportunity to get back at this football game. So Creighton, number 22, lines up with John and Itra, 34, as... St. John's goes second in short yardage. They'll get the first down as Creighton powers his way uh, inside the 45 down at the 42-yard line where he's stopped by Joe Carrato, number 24, out of Ridgewood, New Jersey. And as you look at the replay, they go straight at him, man-to-man -man blocking. They block the nose guard man-to-man. -man. Creighton just lowers his head and picks up the first down. When, you're, when your backs are against the wall and you need to come out big on your drives, you shouldn't even dilly-dally or mess around with anything fancy. Go right at them. Make them stop you with your bread-and-butter plays. So it goes first and 10 for St. John's now at the pace 41-yard line. They're going to give it to Creighton on a slant, and he gets some real estate, too, on that play. As the wine dance freshman runs into Lamar Williams, the 294-pound nose guard for pace, but not before Creighton makes another good gain. It's Creighton piling up the yardage this afternoon. He's been a heavy-duty ball carrier in this game, Billy. Right now, Creighton for the day has carried 37 times for 142 yards. He deserves all of it, and I think they're doing exactly what they're supposed to be doing now. I think they may have woken up, Ed, by that fumble return by Reed Sands. So it's a second-and-four situation for St. John's at the pace 35. Again, that quick handoff on the inside to Creighton. That time, not much running room there, Bill, as he stopped. We talked about a comparison before. You know, Creighton's beginning to develop the kind of explosiveness that Anthony Russo had. Creighton's becoming a more aggressive runner, too. He can explode upfield, cut back, take the defenders with him. Early in the season, Creighton was looking to make too many cuts. Now he's kind of a one-cut explode runner. Well, that's Creighton what, is a better pass receiver, too, at, uh, than Russo was at this stage. And that's what confidence does for you. When you understand what you're doing and you do it effectively, it makes you feel good about it and you know what you're doing. So it's third and four for St. John's as Levine wants to throw. And he has a man open to McPherson with a nice catch, but he drops it. McPherson trying to make a diving catch goes as an incomplete pass. Brings up a fourth downs situation for St. John's now. And let's see what the Red Storm will do. Remember, they got the ball at the pace 35-yard line. They almost have to punt because yeah. you don't want to be able to give uh, the pace setters good field position. But I thought, out of all the games we've been doing, Ed, that's the first time I've seen McPherson miss the ball in his hands. I think he stumbled just before the catch, and I think that hurt his concentration. Was it easy because he had a dive for it, too? Steve Campolay, the offensive tackle for St. John's, number 78, comes out as Demikas gets ready to punt it away. He'll kick it away just inside the 50. He'll angle it for the sidelines. And he keeps it into Mandarikas, who has the ball at the 10-yard line. Comes out across the 20 and a nice return before Dan Ryan makes a stop on Billy Mentakitas. So, a 25-yard punt for Demikas gives Pace the football with 9-10 to go and a chance to tie this ball game or go in front. They're trailing 20-13, to but the setters have the ball at their own 23-yard line. Well, the momentum is without a doubt on the pace setter's side. They've got to do something with this drive. I think this is key right now. If they're going to make a move and tie this game up, they've got to have a good drive. And they've established a passing game here lately, Billy. Let's, and they're going to shoot it right here as they hit Chapa, who's very successful catching and running the football. Chapa with a reception here. Came into the game with 11 receptions. That is his third catch today for Chris Chapa as Pace picks up some short yardage before Carl Volpe makes the stop. 
But see, Ed, even if you throw the short pass and you pick up four yards, it's just like running the ball because you want your second down situation to be short. I thought that was the kind of pass that is very conservative and, and really does the job, and I thought it was an outstanding job of hitting Chapa for seven yards. So Pace will go second and five from the 29-yard line as they bring Brett Hartman as a wide receiver on the right side. They're going to go slot on the right. They'll run the big guy inside on a fake, and then the quarterback keeps and tries to turn the corner, and Mazareka gets the first down. Demikas made the stop for St. John's. I think they must have listened to us also, Ed, because before he wasn't reading the defensive end, and he was handing off the ball when he should have been able to keep it around the end. Now they've made that adjustment, and St. John's has got a counterattack because they're hurting they're hurting uh, St. John's by going outside. The one thing we still have not seen for Pace in the triple option formation is the pitch to the trailer back. If they have any confidence in that play, they might want to unveil it here because they certainly haven't shown it. Might catch St. John's off guard. First and ten for Pace. Hart with the ball. Not doing a good job of tackling that time, St. John's, but there was a flag tossed at the end of the play after Paul Hart comes up very close to the first down stick, but let's see what the call is. It could be a face mask penalty because sometimes you get on that sideline and there's nowhere to go. I think it is a face mask penalty. Pace players are celebrating, so obviously the penalty is against St. John's, and with it will come a first down for Pace. As with 8-16, they're on the move. Yep, face mask against the Red Storm. Thank you very much. You're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> the momentum, without a doubt, has changed hands completely. They've got great field position. They've mixed it up with the run in the pass. It seems like we're seeing a more confident pace setter team by Coach Greg Lasardi. They started out very conservative in the, at the beginning of the third quarter. Now they've opened it up. As you look at the replay... Uh, he hands the ball off to Paul Hart. Paul Hart does an excellent job of getting north and south very quickly. And at the end of the play, you don't see it on this, but he does pick up the face mask. That's a 15-yard penalty. Gives pace first and 10 from the St. John's 40-yard line. And they run at that time up the middle, but not much there as they made the nice fake give off after the fake a nice... After the handoff, a nice fake, but it did not fool Randolph Howard who came up to make the stop on the fullback, Billy Smith. Well, sometimes, as we've stated before, Ed, you run the fullback in the middle just to keep them honest, to keep the defense at home. And I think right now, the middle is, is not a good place for the Pacers to go at this time of the game. So I think that their best bet is to either get outside, roll out, allow uh, Mike uh, Mazarenko to, to throw the ball across the middle or, or, or deep. So it's second and ten now for Pace. Mazarenko's done a good job with his ball faking here. He gives it inside, though, to Smith, and he gets a couple of yards up the middle. Bring up a third down and long situation for Pace with 7.29 to go in the ball game and the clock running. As you look at the replay, he tries to read the defensive end. The defensive end's goal's out that time, so he tries to give Smith the ball inside. Good job by Mike Mazarenka, but now this is a key situation. I feel, Ed, this is two down territory. They've got to take two to pick up the first down. So it is third and seven now for Pace at the St. John's 37, and yes, it is a big play in this game. Mazarenka. Mazarenka found everybody covered, and Chris Carew, who, as he's done so often for St. John's, comes up with a big defensive stop, brings up a fourth down situation for Pace. Be sure to stay tuned to WLIG TV 55 this evening as Matthew Broderick and Alan Ruck team up in Ferris Bueller's Day Off on TV 55's primetime movie at 8. As you look at the replay, I felt that Mike Mazarenka, he, he took off a little bit too soon. He had plenty of time to throw. There's nobody around him. There's no reason for him to tuck the ball here and go. If he stays with his receivers downfield, they'll work for him and get back open. So a timeout is taken by Pace as they want to talk this over, Bill, in a fourth and nine situation at the St. John's 39, trailing 20 to 13 in what no doubt is a crucial play here for Pace. I think what he has to do really is, is get maximum protection from his offensive line and running backs and go straight back on a seven-step drop and wait for the receivers to get the, the yards necessary for the first down because I really felt that he had time to throw in the last play, but he just didn't show the patience to, to, to uh, wait for the receivers to clear. Now, the problem that Pace has had throwing the football is to their wide receivers. They only have one catch today by a wide receiver. That's Brett Hartman, the freshman who made a big catch for 44 yards to set up a touchdown, the first TD for Pace. They've been throwing to the backs. Chris Chaffa, the uh, number five, the all-purpose back, four paces, caught three passes for 26 yards. So I would think, Billy, if they're going to put the ball upstairs... St. John's will want to watch out for Chapa because he's been their main receiving threat for Pace. And also, Frank Bucci, uh, number 88, the tight end, has missed two crucial uh, receptions. Maybe he's ready to redeem himself. 
So on what now is a crystal clear cold day late in November, as the football season is in the winter time of its season, Pace will try to make something happen. Nazaranka in trouble. Throws a little dinky pass, incomplete. He got away with that earlier, but that time when trying to short on the ball, Richard Rodriguez is over there and the pass was short, goes incomplete. And St. John's holds and takes over first and ten with 6.22 to go in the game. That was a crucial play, but they still have time. There's plenty of, plenty of time in the game for them to get back in there. I have to applaud Mike uh, Mazarenka because he made a great effort trying to get the ball in there, what they call a flip pass, but it was just a little short. And I think his momentum was going away from the play, so it didn't allow him to get full force to it. I can see why Greg Lasati, the coach of base, decided to take his defensive back, Mazarenka, and make a quarterback out of him. That's a big gamble, but it's paid off. He certainly has been uh, an improving quarterback for a pace and has done the job here today. So St. John's on first and ten. Goes back to Jermaine Creighton, who gets out of the 45 on a first down carry with now 6.15 to go in the game. Stop is made by Joe Melfi, the 5'8", 165-pound sophomore. And Ed, this is the time of the game when you're nursing a, a one touchdown lead that you you're, you bring the money to the light. Your money man is, is Jerome, Jermaine Caton. He's well over 1,000 yards. He's broken the freshman record. Him and Anitra should be the difference in the game. they got to keep the clock moving and get this game over with. I know somebody who's warm today, Jermaine Creighton with 31 carries. They've kept him warm, and he's been hot with 147 yards rushing. And St. John's goes second down and four from the 44. And again, it goes to Creighton as he tries to move the pile. And I think he's got a first down there, Bill. Joe Fina, the defensive tackle out of New Milford, Connecticut, finally pulled out Creighton, but not before. I think Creighton moved the stakes. The chain gang waiting for the signal. Well, I guess they are listening to us, Ed, but then when you get in any adverse situations as they pick up the first down, you go back to what you do best. They lined up in the I formation with Anitra leading on man-to-man on -man blocking and picked up the first down. That's what they have to do. Keep the chains moving. Be real conservative in their play calling right now. and Do not take an, a chance unless the opportunity is there. Billy, if they listen to me too long, they're in trouble. <laughs> <laughs> I'm all right for short solutions, not long ones, though. First and ten for St. John's at midfield with 5-11 to go. And the Red Storm up 20-13 to 13 as the handoff goes to Creighton. And he's getting some real estate. That's how he moved the pile. Brian Perrone, number seven, the linebacker, and number eight, Chris Weaver, the defensive end, made the stop. As you look at the replay, the entire offensive line, Dan Ryan, Rico Griggs, John Irving, Michael Carter, Steve Kaplan, all of them did an outstanding job of getting the surge. So when he, he got to the line scrimmage, there was no penetration. All he did was move the pile, picked up a good eight or nine yards, and that's exactly what you need to do at this time of the game. St. John's now has rushed for 185 yards in the game. They passed for 236, so they're getting plenty of yardage. As again, they go to Creighton, and he gets the first down the 5'9, 175-pound freshman from Windanch has become the meal ticket in this game, moving the chains. You know, Creighton is also, I think, at this stage of his career, uh, better at going to the sideline and taking enough field. Russo had the unusual toughness and durability, Bill, that made him special, and time will tell if Creighton has that kind of characteristic. Well, if he continues to work hard, he could be one of the best backs to come out of uh, St. John's in some time. I think he's improved tremendously during the course of the year. So St. John's goes first and ten from the pace 40 with 4.04 to go in the game. The mean with a little short pass completes it to Tom McPherson as he's done so often during their career. From McPherson, he makes another reception. McPherson has 39 career touchdown passes here at St. John's, and he's only a junior. Well, you can tell that McPherson and Mark Levine are working very well together because Levine threw the ball before McPherson even turned around. The only advice I'd give to McPherson on the play, Ed, is to stay in bounds to keep the clock moving. That was a gain of five. Brings up a second and five situation for the Red Storm as they go from the eye. Creighton gets a couple of yards on the play, but nice defensive play by Joe Fina to get over there. Joe Fina a little slow finishing off the play. Bill, there's something else in the comparison of Anthony Russo, who, of course, has graduated from St. John's after setting all kinds of rushing records, and the freshman, Jermaine Creighton. Russo, I think, hit the hole faster, and he had such quickness on that first step. He was almost up to full speed, but I think right now Creighton has more overall speed than Anthony Russo. Third and four for St. John's as the official jumps in, and a timeout is called. So, but we're watching this St. John's Pace football game in the premier Thanksgiving weekend classic. Premier car rental, a good force is no accident.
Still the greatest city in the world. What better place for a great university? A university with one of the leading colleges of pharmacy in the country. A top law school and nationally accredited schools of business whose programs are designed to meet the challenge of the new global economy. Plus affordable tuition. Yes, the city is New York and the university is St. John's. Major League Baseball Home Video proudly presents the National Pastime, a five-volume set that celebrates baseball's majesty and magic. The first two volumes, the official history of baseball, touch every base in the game's 125-year legacy. This five-and-a-half-hour collection also features the captivating excitement of baseball's most unforgettable pennant races, plus the 50 greatest home runs in baseball history. From the myth makers to the record breakers. From the remarkable to the improbable. And the final volume highlights the drama of baseball's greatest championship series. Glorious baseball memories plus this free book, 125 years of professional baseball. If it happened between the white lines, it's in this action-packed collection. The national pastime is now available where videos are sold. So back here at St. John's University at Red Storm Field, SKU trying to hang on the football and put this in the victory column as they lead 20 to 13 over pace with only 3.23 to go. St. John's has a third and four at the pace 33 yard line along with the BT Express, Billy Taylor, Ahmed Ingalls and Billy, if St. John's wins this game, it will be a 10th victory this season. The most they've ever won in a football season would be 10. And Jack Kaiser, the athletic director, was very proud of that because he, he feels with the young players they have, they can be good for a number of years. Key play right here on third and four. Levine gets it as he finds a hole. He gets the first down and moves the chains and keeps the clock rolling with St. John's in possession. Nice play by Levine to burst through there and move it inside the pace 25. He followed the blocking of center number 56, John Irving. I thought it was a gutsy call and a great call because Mark Levine has good athletic ability, shows you his mobility and agility and picks up the first down. Keeps the drive moving. The clock is moving and the season is winding down for both teams. A nice game by Levine who shows power to go with that speed as he picks up 10 yards in a quarter back sneak first and 10 for the red storm inside pace territory here's creighton doing his thing again as he goes inside the 20 yard line where he runs into reed sands a 510 168 pounder from brooklyn and as the clock winds down there is not even a question as to who our offensive player of the game is oh the offensive player no problem there but you tell him Jermaine Creighton, the freshman who broke the MAC conference or the St. John's rookie rushing record uh, by Russo, and I think he deservedly should get our MVP award. I think we're down to two defensive players, which we'll talk about after this play, one on either side of the line of scrimmage for both teams. This is going to be Creighton with the football. He has time to get some room there. As the blocking unfolds, he gets inside the 15. Creighton picks up some more real estate. Again, Reed Sands had to come up from his free safety spot to make the tackle. Two players, I think, defensively have stood out here today, Billy. On the side for pace, I would say their linebacker, Chris DeGrazia, number 17 for St. John's, Rudolph Howard, number 46, another linebacker. Either one of those would be a good pick for the MVP defensive player of this game. They called a timeout here, but I still feel that either one of them could have it because I thought Pace did a good job of really slowing St. John's down when they were gaining momentum. But then again, St. John's is going to be 10-1 and one on the year, and their defense has played quite well. You cannot be 10-1 and one without having a good defense. Well, let's give it to Guy. I think at this point, he played a good football game. Randolph Howard, he's had an interception. He's had a fumble recovery. He's made a couple of big stops, so... Let's give the MVP defensive award to a St. John's player, Randolph Howard, number 46 out of Bayshore. He's 6'3", 200-pound freshman who's been good against the run, and today he's been Johnny on the spot for the year. He's got over 60 tackles and two interceptions. Uh, the entire defense of St. John's played well, but he did stick out because of the, uh, his coming up with big plays in crucial situations. Uh, I think St. John's really showed a lot during the course of the year, and right now, even though it's the last game of the season, they are playing at their highest level, and I think it's, it's a tribute to Coach Bob Ricca and his entire staff. Not easy, too, for players at the 1AA non-scholarship levels to come back and play two games virtually in a five-day span as St. John's had playing 
probably their uh, best game of the year Saturday against Wagner in what was a very big game for them, the ECAC bowl game. It's not often you play a bowl game and then come back and play a regular season game. And that's why Coach Rickett was worried about the emotional letdown, but they showed you that they are true uh, good players by coming out and playing a good game even though the emotion wasn't there. First and ten from the 12-yard line as they come up the middle with Anitra, the fullback that time for a couple of yards. Rickett said the one advantage to playing with only three days practice, he said, after a victory over Wagner, if you had a whole week, the guys would take a few days off and celebrate, and you'd have trouble getting their attention. He said, but they knew they had to come back and get ready in a hurry for this game against Pace, so he thought that would work as an advantage for the Red Storm today. And I think he was totally correct, because I could understand it. If I had played in the big game, I probably would have went to the movies and different things and had a good time, you know. Billy, you sure that you uh, had a good time after football and didn't hurt too much after? Well, usually I couldn't wake up till like that Wednesday, so uh, <laughs> I'm trying to take it easy before that. And you had to make it up in class those last three days. Billy, you sprinted. Second down play for St. John's as they give it to Creighton, and he worms his way inside the five-yard line. Creighton now for the day is really piling up the real estate here. Billy's carried the ball 37 times for 182 yards and long since broke Anthony Russo's freshman record for most yards by a frosh. He needed 118. As we said, Creighton's got 182. Joe Fina made the stop for pace with a clock running down to one minute now. St. John's will go third and two at the eight. St. John's controlling the football, running the clock out, leading pace 20 to 13. And just to reiterate, uh, our MVP is uh, Jermaine Creighton on offense and on defense, linebacker number 46, Randolph Howard. Third and two for the Red Storm. They give it to Anitra, and I think he's very close to that first down, and he's driven. But ball is stolen out of his hands, though. Let's see if they allow it to go. They're going to let it go. Reed Sands has the football stolen away, and Pace gets the football back with 33 seconds to go. What a theft there. Anitra had the football with bouncing up and down, holding the ball out of his hands. He actually had the ball out like a loaf of bread. Reed Sands says, I'll take it. Thank you. For the second time today, Pace safety, Reed Sands, the opportunistic one, picks the ball up and give his pace a chance here. As you look at the replay, it's a straight-on blocking. He should not be trying to do anything. He should wrap it up with both hands. That was a really a bonehead play by Anitra, who's a very smart player. Uh, when you're in that situation, you're trying to wrap up the game. It, yardage does not matter. Pace will go on the ground, surprisingly letting Hart carry the football. He's trying to get to the outside. He doesn't get out of bounds, Bill. The clock is running. Chris Carew made the stop that comes up just around the 30-yard line. The clock is down to 22 seconds as Pace will call a timeout here. And an injury also. There's a player down with an injury on the Pace side. And see, so that's the kind of play that gives coaches gray hairs because in those situations, the touchdown does not matter. The clock is your ally and you're trying to use it. And I thought that Anitra did not play smart football in that situation. I think he was trying to reach to make sure he had the first down, too. In that case, he didn't need to reach because he still had a fourth down. And I think he had the first down without reaching. But anyway, it's Pace's opportunity as once again, the setters get one fleeting chance here to try to tie this game or win it. With 22 seconds left in the ball game, they go first and 10 with the 31-yard line. So Pace, give another opportunity, Bill. Yes, they do, and uh, I think it's a, it's, a, it's a shame because turnovers have made the difference in the game in, in allowing the Pace setters to, to be back in it. So we'll come back in just a moment with St. John's leading Pace 20 to 13 with 22 seconds left in this game, but the setters have the football and one more chance. Mac Football is brought to you in part by Nobody Beats the Wiz Home Entertainment Centers. For state-of-the-art home electronics, computers, cameras, music, movies, and more, Nobody Beats the Wiz. Bart and I are going to make you real happy. Right, Bart? Right, Phil. We're going to save you a lot of money. Right, Bart? Right, Phil. How? Wiz bucks, Bart. Giant size savings from Nobody Beats the Wiz. Giant size savings, Phil? Over $2,000, Bart. TVs, camcorders, computers, audio components, cameras, cellular phones, music and movies. Just cut out the whiz bucks and save money. Right, Phil? Right, Bart. Whiz bucks, a giant size way of saying nobody beats the whiz. So it's back to work for Pace with 22 seconds to go. They try to get this game tied or go ahead as they go on first and 10 with Mazaranka on the rollout. Throws it out of bounds, incomplete. Second down, pounding his hand to the ground was the intended receiver, Brett Hartman, but the pass was out of bounds. 
So it'll go down second down and 10 for pace with 14 seconds to go. And they got a long way to go, Billy. They got 69 yards to go in 14 seconds if they want to tie or win this game. If they tie, do we change our offensive players and our defensive players of the game and we keep them the same? Well, let's see what happens. Okay. <laughs> we're going to keep, we're gonna keep, keep your options open. Be a politician. Keep your options open. We got to keep Jermaine Creighton, though. There's nobody better today on this field. I don't think so. Mazaranka. Nice pass. Intercepted at midfield for St. John's. And that will seal it on the return, bringing it down inside the 35-yard line. Richard Rodriguez with his second interception of the season. Seals that one for St. John's with three seconds to go. And St. John's has his second pass interception of the day. But uncharacteristically for St. John's, they had two fumbles today. They lost for a team that uh, leads the country in turnovers or second this year. And that's, that, that's a lot of turnovers in one short period of time. The ball had too much air time on that one because they had four defensive backs uh, lined up 20 yards deep. There's no way he could throw behind them. The ball had too much air, air time, and uh, that's why the interception occurred. Great job by uh, St. John's in turning away the pace setters. Rodriguez, the 5'10", 165-pound freshman from Brooklyn, makes the interception, gives St. John's the ball back at the pace 30 yard line though I think there's a little discussion going on among the officials that they're going to march off a penalty against St. John's but that will be immaterial at this point as long as St. John's has possession of the football at the pace 46 yard line so the St. John's team after building a 17 to nothing lead had to kind of hang on for some rough times in the second half before sealing this win Jermaine Creighton with an outstanding day carrying the football Mark Levine threw the ball very well. St. John's certainly piled up the offensive yardage. 473 yards total offense. That's not an awful lot. Now, Billy, they're going to give the ball back to St. John's here at the 45-yard line. And look at this formation. They're almost in a prevent offense. <laughs> they are, in fact. They learned that from the Giants way back in 19-something. That's the ball game. And St. John's finishes the season with a 10-1 record. The most victories ever by a St. John's football team. A team that finished... Tied for first place with Marist in the MAC race. Marist declared the champion because they beat the Red Storm during the regular season. But St. John's finishing on a high note. We'll, we'll come right back in just a moment. After my divorce, I was up to my neck in debts and lost all my credit cards. I thought I'd never get a credit card again. With First Consumers National Bank, I got a secured and more MasterCard. Plus benefits other cards didn't offer. I won't kid you. My credit was bad. But I've done my homework on secured credit cards. FCNB is the only bank to offer a credit line that's 150% of deposit without processing fees. Now you can get the credit you need, regardless of past credit problems, with the secured and more MasterCard. Apply now and get advantages like no application or processing fees, plus quick approval and no annual fee for six months. You need only a $100 minimum for a credit limit that's 150% of your deposit. And your deposit is protected for you in an FDIC-insured certificate of deposit account. I could never save enough for the required deposit. But FCNB's $100 minimum is a lot lower than the rents. Call now for a free secured and more MasterCard application and start building your credit future. The 700 Club, weekdays at noon on TV 55. Our most valuable player for the offense should go to the entire offensive line, but it goes to freshman running back who broke the all-time freshman record, Mr. Jermaine Creighton. Congratulations, Jermaine. Congratulations, buddy. Congratulations, kid. Good job all day. Way to run tough, too, man. Very tough. And our defensive player uh, who had a very good game, number 46, Randolph Howard. Randolph Howard, nice job, buddy. Congratulations and a good job. Good job. St. John's wins their 10th game of the season. They finished the season 10 and 1. Bob Ricca has the best record in St. John's history. Congratulations to them. Back upstairs to Ed. So, once again, St. John's defeats Pace 20 to 13 in the premier Thanksgiving weekend classic. Along with Billy Taylor, this is Ed Ingalls. We thank you for joining us. Have a terrific holiday weekend.
Long Island's most powerful hour of game shows. Take the Jeopardy Challenge at 6. And...